Boom. Welcome to the RTM Podcast Show, episode 10. <laughs> You're done now. Big Bad Spray, yeah. Young Spray, here with my co-host, Queen Ice Scream, you already know. Hi, everyone. Come on, busy today. Everyone. Come on, say nut and cream. And today's special guest, let me not tell you, tell you something about today's special guest. I'm back to giving out flowers to people that deserve it. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? To people that deserve it. Because obviously, everyone's been on this year. We're giving out flowers. We're giving out flowers and all that. But I gave out flowers to Terry Walker mm -hmm. because yeah. she deserved it. Exactly. You know? Definitely. Like, Big up, um, Terry. You know, the same thing I'm going to say, the same thing I said then, I'm going to say now, it's like, I feel like the scene, you know, they forget about the greats or whatever. Forget me for a sec here. Because people come here and they be like, oh, Spray, you know, you're a legend and all that. I respect that and I thank everyone that's come there and showed their respect or whatever and made me feel. But it didn't start with me either. You know, we've got an um, industry in the UK that we should be proud of. You know what I mean? And, and, like, and I don't see why we're not proud of um, our history and why we don't show it properly because we have people like my guest today like Mr Skinny Man Big up. from Mud Fam that um, yes. you know that put in a lot of work in the um, early parts of this UK music industry as far as like keeping it real and bringing you that gritty you know estate mm. kind of rap do you get what I'm trying to say like that he, to me it was like you Rodney P Kalashnikov yeah. but obviously you before kind of that time but I'm mm -hmm. saying as far as like Rodney P I remember Rodney P them time they but Black Twang even yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Freddy Krueger yes mm -hmm. so there's like people that's come before us Mike GLC mm -hmm. yeah, you get me yeah. big Mike but yeah. mm -hmm. Mike I would say even come after you yeah uh, yeah, yeah. kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. remember you're older yeah. innit so it's like <laughs> yeah. Mike that's my dog but yeah. I'm saying we've got a um, We've got industry to be proud of. Even down mm -hmm. to Estelle, you've got Paris yeah. One, the yes. Gallem. Obviously, Cream yeah. is repping, but we've got like Paris One, we've mm -hmm. got Estelle, we've got Gallem, what, mm -hmm. what was doing their thing from back in the day, even Nole. Do you get what yeah. I'm trying to say? Yeah. Big up Nole, yeah. she's still doing her thing, but whatever. But yeah, we've got um, we've got a history to be proud of. And flowers today, Mr. Skiddy, man, <laughs> because you. you understand, you're the first <laughs> white boy I know. <laughs> To be talking this thing over here, you get me? Yeah. The original yeah. K Cole, mm -hmm. the original <laughs> H, you get me? <laughs> so yeah, boom. So yeah, we're gonna talk us talk us through your story, man. Glad to be here. Talk us. I ain't even seen this on, guy since on, the wing. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. I ain't seen you since the Ville, man. V visits in the box. <laughs> I'm in the box. I ain't seen you since the Ville, but it's good to yes. see you, man. Yes, yeah, come on. Live well, and free. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah, man, we're first, we're going to go, we're going to get into the story <coughs> quickly. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because obviously we've got all the new school kids out there. They might not know, you know, skinny man. So, yeah, start, start us through, like, where was you born? Where was you brought up? I was, I was like, I was, I was born in Leeds and brought up in Leeds. And um, the Leeds environment, you know, your childhood seems magical because you don't know about the woes in life. You don't we know got about, the Leeds man them, though. We got the Leeds man them, yeah. like the whole of Leeds. Um, See? Chapel Town was a foundation for the musical corner and the hub of the culture. Yeah. Um, but big up the whole of Leeds, um, Headingley, um, big up Little London, my stomping grounds. And I think in Leeds, growing up, what became apparent to me is my first musical influences was without even realization. Mm. So my mum's at home and she's pumping Motown and Bashment. And then if we venture up the road... Where's your mum from, brother? Sorry. My mum's from Cumbria, which is border of England and Scotland. Okay. Yeah. So. And she's a bit of an OG in her... In fact, she's more of an OG than I could ever dream to be. I could only ever wish to walk in her shadow. Oh, big up mummy. Unbelievable. Big up mummy. Big up mummy. Um, my mum, everyone in the ends knows her as Nanny Wendy. She, so. she, she's, she's the Florence Nightingale of the ghetto. Mm -hmm. She really is all that. And a big up mummy. Man. Yeah, I, I yeah. could, you know, everything that I am, mm. I'm only an a inch of what my mum is. Yeah. Mm. Like, Love she, you for that. She's the real Gaza. She's the real, <laughs> she's the real Gaza. Mm. But um, through my mum's upbringing in Leeds, I'll say 
culturally you don't really realize what's going on. You're just living in your little bubble in your childhood. Mm. And um I remember in Leeds like being on the front line and seeing around the times when the riots was kicking off the in Hayfield where there used to be a pub which was the front line and Chapel Town they would block off the road and mm. It's kind of like, I suppose only some Jamaicans from Matches Lane, Spanish Town would know about blocking off the road. Like, <laughs> we used to block off the road like that in Leeds. Maybe that's where they learned how to do it. And um, so when the, we used to see that the police didn't have no, no firepower in Chapel Town. They ain't coming in. And uh, uh, uh. The youngers would brick up the cars whilst the elders would, like, block burnt cars in the roads and it would be our strip. And um, How old is you these times? This was from when my first observations started around four and five mm. of what was going on. At the same time, we would go to the local church, learn how to make steel pan costumes for the carnival. Um, my sister brought it to my attention one day. She went, and you ever realize that we're only white kids on bus? <laughs> like, no, but does that matter? And um, still went along there. And I think by the time I started getting my early grasp of my musical influences, obviously from my mum pumping reggae and soul, and I'm going into the Mandela Centre in Chapel Town and I'm listening to toasting and chanting. It's um, the early forms of DJ Dancehall, big up to Uroy, who's just passed away, the king of MC and the king of rapping, oh, the king of dancehall, the king of chanting and toasting, the king, Uroy, just passed away, RIP, a man who got his flowers and deservedly so. Rest in peace. And, um, I remember one time I'm there jamming and a new tune's come out and it was Smiley Culture, police officer, producer. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, I could go to Woolworths and buy this tune. Mm. So I've gone Woolworths with my little pocket money saved up and I bought um, Smiley Culture, police officer, don't give me a producer. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to learn how to toast all of these lyrics word for word. I'm going to write down all of the bars. Smiley Culture, he's huge, Smiley he's huge trying to rap now, you know. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Young yeah, done. Um, I'll always campaign for justice for Smiley Culture because we'll never accept the official police report mm -hmm. of the outcome of Smiley Culture's tragic passing. Mm -hmm. Smiley Culture will always hold a light as one of my most inspirational MCs because mm -hmm. he's the first record I bought Simple. of someone who I wanted to emulate. Mm. I wrote his lyrics down word for word. I turned mm. it over on the B side. They had this tune called Cockney Translator. Mm. So through that, I'm like, I'm a little Leeds boy, Yorkshire accent. Little be known to me, I'm being raised in a West Indian culture mm. because I said that my bubble hadn't been burst. Um, and um, started writing down all the words, Cockney Translator, learning how to chant and toast and then put my own little twist on how to do my version of what they're doing. Like my take on it, I'm slim, mm. I'm trim, I ride the rhythm, I mm. dash my mm. rubbish in a bin. <laughs> <laughs> Some simple type of lyrics. And um, mm. them times that I was six and seven, and I remember they wanted me to um, be in the school nativity play. Mm. And I was already like, this is played out. Like, this don't really cut it for me. I'll tell you mm. what's really cutting it. Some things just come out called the Rubik's Cube. Mm. What was that? Some square, yeah, 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 and it yeah, just yeah, buff, yeah, yeah. just land like how every kid wants a PS5 right now. <laughs> what about the Rubik's Cube? <laughs> In my generation, you just wanted a Rubik's Cube, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I had out to teach her, yeah, I had out to teach her, bun the school play. Can I do this little rap about being a Rubik's Cube and that? And the teacher encouraged it, so I mm. got to like pen my first lyrics about being a Rubik's Cube, and I was about six, seven then, cool. and and so I think. I don't know how music writing got into me, mm. but I was heavily into the chanting and the toasting and the lyrical ability of how they was flipping their skills. Mm. And um, I wanted to do my own songwriting, did a little rap about Rubik Cube, and then hip hop came out. And I think up until that point, being culturally observational, we had seen the skinheads versus the teddy boys and mm. the mods versus the rockers. Mm. and all different cultures and then the Rasta man then with their Rasta movement, peace and love, and then the hippies with their peace and love kind of in tune mm. with what was going on culturally all around us. And then there was a new culture that was birthed right in our generation mm. called hip hop. So what better for the kids of that generation? And I mean, it don't matter where you come from. I believe that kids in Leeds were getting the culture firsthand before other states in America were. Is it? Yeah, like, yeah, New York had it. Okay. But I think it was reaching London and Leeds and Manchester mm. before it was reaching the West Coast Reason of America. Being. Reason being is because we had an immediate connection of capital city to capital city. Okay. The London and New York connection link up. And I think we was hearing um, 
old school MC Busy B sound clashes mm. on cassette tapes that okay. were coming to us in London and Leeds. Mm. And that would have been before other states in America were getting them outside of New York. So we firsthand had an immediate firsthand in the culture mm. from New York directly, stemming from sound system. And I think that what birthed our right to own that culture as much as anyone else was that in New York it was birthed out of sound system culture. Mm. But in England, the sound system culture was stronger than it had ever been in America. Mm. It was like second to Jamaica. So I think we felt that we have a right mm. to hip hop more than anyone okay. or as equal as anyone because we're more in tune with the roots of the dance hall culture than the Americans are. Mm. Um, so getting into break mm. dancing and starting writing my little raps when people was rapping in a full on American accent and going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all stuff like that, just mm. taken in by the culture. It was around the time when my mom said, you're moving to London. Okay. So for me, I was like, oh, we're moving to London now. When I moved to London, I moved straight to Stoke Newton. How old did you? Nine. Okay, okay. Nine, about to go on 10. Mm. And you go from being in primary school to middle school to high school in Leeds. Okay. So I think at about the age of seven or eight, you go into middle school. Mm. That's the age that you start learning your second language. That's the age that you start learning what you do when you become a year seven, first year in secondary. Mm. So there's almost, you can say that the schools up north were two years ahead of the education curriculum in okay. London. I've come in, they're telling me I'm going to be a third year in primary. I'm going, no, I'm meant to be going into second year middle school. They're like, no, you're third year primary, then you've got mm. to do fourth year primary, then you become a first year in secondary. Mm. I'm like, so when do we start learning French and them things there? Because I've been doing all of that <laughs> for a year. Mm. They say, no, you don't learn that for another two years. I think immediately, I was like, one minute, London schools are dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. School <laughs> is dance and they ain't got nothing for me. I remember they gave me the reading test mm. yeah. and they said, oh, you have the reading capacity of a 13 year old. Mm. And, oh, yeah, your, your education's here and your grammar mm. and rah, rah. And I was like, so what you're telling me is you lot of dance. Yeah, so yeah. I was kind of like, well, school ain't got nothing for me. When I'm chatting to the kids on the playground, like, what, do you lot bunk off? They're like, no. I'm like, where's the big shops where we can go teeth in? <laughs> in Leeds, I was already a teeth. I'd already <laughs> shoplifting a team and he man and got took to Milgarth Police Station as a youth. <laughs> about to come bail me out, trying mm. to clap things, getting mm. caught by the store detective and mm. all that. And, um, in Leeds, doing up social behavior. Doing up social I'm behavior. I'm never going to call it anti-social. It, just being Leeds, very social. In Leeds, there was a cycle of the elders who would clap their cars and do their moving them, then leave them to the youngers who would like raft them up, mm. and then after the youngers had raft them up, there was us kids to go. So how does it work? Figure out how to drive them for ourselves when you could just about see over there. So when I've come to London, I'm like, yeah, you lot teeth cars and all that. They're like, no, we don't know about teeth and cars. I'm like, so you don't know about teeth and cars. You don't go crapping. You don't go earning. <laughs> and and when we had come to London, <laughs> yeah, my, mom had, criminal, you know? my mom had brought me, nine years old, my sister who was four years older than me, so she was 13 going on 14, and my brother who's seven years younger than me, so he just turned two. Mm. Single parent, no money in the house, not knowing what we're going to do. I'll never try to ask nor question my mum's reasons for why she moved us to London. That's her business, where her baggage and she brought us mm -hmm. over. I will never regret the opportunity that she gave us because by coming to London, I felt and realising that school didn't have nothing for me. Mm. I then realised like the world is my oyster mm. and London is my playground. My mum's kind of laid back and eased up still mm. and understands that we've got to do what we've got to do to get you Simple. and eat. And with um, being the eldest boy in the household and there being four hungry mouths in the household at the age of nine, ten. Mm. You better know childhood was over right there. Mad. That that's childhood ended. Mm -mm -mm. Big man thing started right there. Mm -mm -mm. Last money my mum had, she sent me to Stoke Newton High Street. This is our first day we come to London. This is why only Spray will ever get this. <laughs> first day come to London, she gave me her last £10 to mm. go get a Kentucky bucket from Stoke Newton High Street. Go on, mummy. I'm coming back, bucket in my arm like this. I'm sure you should say, yeah, we got going for that bucket, man. You didn't change. Yeah. You have you for the bucket. Listen, and I don't know. No, nah, what you want about that? Like, <laughs> my big Lee's accent, what you want about that? Right? They're like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Come on, I'm having some of this chicken. Started taking the chicken out. Like, yo, mm -hmm. this is on top. Like, this is all we have. Like, mm -hmm. it's on top. I remember, like, thinking I've got to fight for them, all right. <laughs> These big tree youths. Started fighting them now. 
one had a chain, I kind of like it. This is chain, because I knew that my mum used to take gold to the pawn shop mm -hmm. and that used to produce money. You know, so you, you don't know mm -hmm. nothing, but you're making sense of it. Mummy takes gold to the pawn and comes back with money. My man's trying to mash up the chicken, but he's got a gold chain. Take that. Mm. So I've had to go back home and say, Mum, I got rushed for the chicken, you know, and it's all over the floor. She's like, that was our last tenner that we had. What, what, you know, that was mm. our last tenner. I went, I got this though. She went, well, we'll get about 30 quid for that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. The same youths that robbed me, the same youths that robbed me about uh, two years later, uh, must have had an eye for my sister, innit? Uh, <laughs> and they're going to Stoke New and um, secondary school. And they've come round to my mum's house and I've come in one day and I've come and I look and I walk in and I see on the sofa, I ask him, I see the bread up. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and he's like, and, he, and he's, and he's he, like, you he, cool? I'm like, I'm not cool. You don't like, remember <laughs> I was like, mum, like, mum, because I know, I know my mum is crying, like, my mum is right, yeah. I died. Yeah, yeah, mom's about it. Listen, she's about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're making your mum eat the chicken, you know? Mum, that's the guy who took the chicken. She's like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, no, trust me. No one can't trouble you in the manner. I'm like, no one can't trouble me in the manner. You trouble me. He took my chicken. Scarred me for life on my first day mm. in London. Like, what's mm. going on? Mm. My second mm. observation after that, I met a guy called Darren Buffonge, who, when we went to secondary, um, Klashnikov mm. is his best friend. Okay. And he was my first friend in London. Mm. So we're all so tightly knit. Mm. That it's mad that Darren came up at the same time as me because mm. we had been friends in this thing for years. Right. When... Um, they, I'm in school now, just to show you about school and how kids are wicked. You know how kids are wicked and evil. Mm. Mm. So I'm there like, yeah, I'm from Leeds, uh -uh. what you want about? Uh -uh. And everybody to me sounded so broadly cockney. It was like, you fuck off, you fucking, I mean, you're all right, so <laughs> ain't you? Like, mm. Where are you from? But you fucking drive a tractor, didn't you? And it was like, uh, cars are not mm -hmm. drive a tractor, it's a town, it's Leeds, it's a city. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, one kid was like, yeah, your mum. And I'm like, I think I moved from Leeds to London when all of the kids had started cussing mums in London. <laughs> yeah, that was fighting <laughs> words. No, but what I'm saying is give it another year, it yeah. probably would have reached to Leeds yeah. and I probably would have got it. Yeah. Oh, seen man are cussing mums. Yeah. Uh. But I don't know about this thing. <laughs> so I'm there trying to make friends in the playground man's telling me about your mum and I'm like, yeah, me mum, what about me mum? <laughs> what about me, mum? He's like, yeah. He's like, he don't get it. He don't get it. You don't know. Fuck your mum, innit? I'm like, what? Ah! Got a kill for that. Like, you know, like that loyalty that mm -mm. you got a kill for mum. Yeah. What? And I think even the headmaster had to say, now everyone cusses this mum that don't really exist. So don't mm. worry if man's talking about your mum. I think a couple of years after that, it became, oh, your girl. Because there was too much beef with man cussing mums. Mum and, was the mum was this, but like. I came to London at the time when it was the cussing mums. So uh. Darren Buffonge and them lot see me get outcasted because I didn't know about the mums talk. So just don't talk to me. If you can't, mums? Mm. Uh. No. Yeah. I don't need yeah. no friend <laughs> yeah. about mums. Yeah, no. That's mad. That's and then um, a breakdancing crew come to the school. Mm. And they had been in, it was London All Stars. Mm. versus Leeds and Manchester in the final heats. Mm. So they remembered me because I was with the Leeds crew, break dancing and that. And they was yeah. like, yeah, you're the kid who was, what are you doing here? You moved here? Yeah. And it's school assembly and I ain't got no friends in school because of this mum thing. Uh, and they went, yeah, we want to call someone up from your school to the front. And they got me to do my break dance. I used to do my body popping, mm -hmm, break dancing, yeah. women and everything there. Did all of that in the school. People are like, oh, you're yeah, everyone's friend now. Yeah. <laughs> like, just a simple little thing yeah. that can change your fate. Like, yeah. oh, you fuck, you fuck sheep, drive a tractor and fuck your mum. To, oh, yeah, you're abridging now because mm. you can dance. Mm. Where do you mm. learn to dance like that? Mm. Like, I told you Leeds ain't no dickhead ends, fam. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, and, then, and then I started getting social acceptance. Mm. My friend, um, Spongy, Buffonge, his dad was a big dread mm -mm. in the NZ. And he used to run the factory in Stone Newton. Mm. So they used to let the breakdancers and the graffiti artists and the little rappers come there in the daytime. Then come like, yeah, it's nine o'clock, you lot go. Like, why, what's going on at nine o'clock? Mm. I can see bare big dreads carrying them big speakers. I know what this is. Mm. I'm from Chapel Town, Leeds. I know what I'm going here. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I'm seeing them coming in like, I'm like, oh, rare. He's like, you ain't got to go because it's my dad's thing, so we can stay. Mm. Like, yes, because I ain't got to go home even. <laughs> Mommy like that, yeah. no strict rules, nothing. So I'm there, and I think it was Saxon versus Coxon that night. Oh, yeah. don't lie. Yeah. 
And like, remember, I'm like mm. 10 years old now, mm. fourth year in primary, like we're in the Saxon and Coxon dance and I'm like, I haven't got lyrics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I could chat better than them, man. <laughs> you know, like when you watch your man chat. And I think like these are my superheroes that were chatting. Saxon, like, Asha Saxon. Asha Big Senator. Up, up, um, Come on. D-roll, man. Yes, but this was like Asher Senator, Papa Levi, you know. Um, Smiley Culture was there. Mm. Um, what's the other one? Hello, darling. Tip Irie. They, they were all in there and they're all chatting on the mic and I'm going, Got lyrics, you know, I'm as bad as them, man, you know. And they're like, they're not believing me. I'm like, go on, give me the mic and watch. Mm. And I don't be stupid, you ain't getting the mic. So I kind of like did a, a bandulu move and grabbed the mic and just started chatting lyrics. Mm. And the way they wheeled up the tune, like, right, I thought, right, I'm going to get in trouble now. Mm. It was like, yo, stand him up on the table, make the people see. And I'm like, yeah, come again, <laughs> run ready. <laughs> mm. And then like, we still can't see him. Put a table on the chair, like, put a chair on the table and let them see. And then saw some little white boy DJ and I was like, yeah, happy to DJ for Saxon, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, there was kind of novelty that went, listen, we're doing the um, summer all day. -er. We want you to come on stage and DJ a little lyrics. Wow. And um, so them times I can say I was so heavily into the DJ business. I was inspired by Dominic. Mm. Was the first white guy to go to Jamaica and get acceptance and bust up the place. Mm. And them times now, I've come out of Stokey and I've started meeting Basco. Yeah, yeah. And Basco's went to me, come flower pot in Tottenham. Flower pot, yeah. So yeah. I get to flower pot in Tottenham and I still got my Yorkshire accent, but there's one big black guy called Lloyd. And he's saying, yeah, you kind of speak with an accent still. And I think this was the first time it was ever pointed out as a cultural observation that mm. I'm from Leeds. But I was from a predominantly West Indian cultural environment in Leeds. Mm, Chapotad. Which had never occurred to me and the people that were around mm. me just into the scene and that. And um, I think it had never occurred to me that Lloyd's point out, he went, yeah, you speak with a bit of an accent still. I went, yeah, I'm from Leeds. He went, nah, you speak with an old Jamaican accent. <laughs> <laughs> he went, some of the words you say about second and rah, rah, rah. He goes, you speak like an old Jamaican man. And then I thought it kind of worked out to me. Yeah, where I was raised in mm. Leeds, I'm thinking I've only got a Yorkshire accent, but we go, to Rasclat. You know, like, mm. what the pussy clat you're talking about? And like, but in straight Leeds accent, but with a Jamaican dialect mm. somehow. The main sub sorry, the main subject today is racism, yeah? So mm. we're going to get into all of that as well, because I was even going to ask you, was it racist up there? Yes. Like, so, the so my first cultural observation pointed out to me mm -hmm. was him saying to me, you've got an accent that then made me look back on it. If I was to tell you about, through my life, racial observations, mm. the first one is two joke. Mm. For My mom had a friend who was a very um, desirable beauty queen. I think she was like Miss Barbados and she won Miss World or something. Mm. And she had a son named Stephen who my mom and her used to par and go blues together. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to stay together head to toe in the bed. Mm -hmm. Like my first ever racial observation, I'll tell you straight. And... Um, I've woke up in the morning, I've went, Mom, Stephen's turning white. <laughs> <laughs> and I've run downstairs and everyone's laughing at me in the front room. They're still drinking their snowballs and baby shambun in cess. Mm. I'm like, Stephen's turning white? I'm like, what are you on about? I went, bottom of his feet are turning white. Like, <laughs> you know, I said, and his mum. She went, let me tell you something. She went, do you know why? She went, look at the bottom of my hands and look at the bottom of his feet. She went, do you know why they're white? I'm like, why? She went, because they whipped us and they marched us for miles in the sun. And the only place the sun couldn't burn us was at the bottom of our feet and our hands. Now, this is as a baby, she told me this. And I've went, really? And just believed it, like you believe the tooth fairy and that Santa comes through the chimney when mm. you haven't even got a chimney. You know, the things you believe as mm. a kid. And she told me that, I was like, wow, really? And that's why black people, and I'd look at black people's hands. And I go, it's true. Their hand is lighter than their... Mm in the rest of their complexion and the bottom of their foot. Mm -mm -mm. So that was like, that as a baby, that was a joke played on me. Mm -mm -mm. I think when I was about five, six, going to Westfield Primary School, some of the friends that I had came back singing some Leeds United football song. Mm. And I think at the time I wanted to play football and I wanted the Leeds United kit. Mm. And they come back singing this song about grab this and grab that and do this to that and this and that. Mm. <laughs> Mad thing. Yeah. I'm like, what's the song you're singing? Like, grab a nigga by the toe and all of this <laughs> and do this to a packy and that? Like, what? Mm. My best friends are black and Indian mm. and you're coming singing a song about you're going to do this to them and that to them and I was like, what? And mm. I still wanted to be into football. Mm. Like, 
I wanted to be in the school football team. Mm. And everyone's all Leeds United. So I wanted, yeah, I want a Leeds United kit. Mm. And then I think I, I went to go watch a Leeds United match. And I'm seeing bananas getting thrown and all this. I'm like, what's that all about? Mm. Mad thing. And yeah. they're like, yo. What, what, what was that, the 80s? Leeds was like the NF army. Was that the 80s? Yeah. Okay, okay. And now the we're, 70s. We're going to get into 70s. that. 70s. We're going to get the into 80s. that racism thing. But getting back to your story though, blood, yeah. Okay, so you've come to England. I mean, England. You've come to London. London. You've now got accepted because you can break dance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Get me? Break dancing so got me now, in the gang. You've, you, they've, they've got you on the show. So now you're into music. 100% now. Yeah, yeah. What led you to becoming skinny man that we know. How did you get to that council estate of mine? The, ju the, the journey. How, yeah, how the, did the, you get to the that? The journey is so long, but the foundations of the people who were immediately around me, you know, like for some people you might think, ah, oh, he's such a good guitarist because he looked up to Jimi Hendrix. Mm. But Jimi Hendrix might have been such a good guitarist because he was watching his cousin who weren't really no one, but he was just his cousin. Mm. You know, like that. Mm. So... For me, I think coming to London, meeting Darren Buffonge, him showing me Stone Newton, Factory, Dancehall, mm. Clissel Park, all day as. Clissel Park. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is the thing, Come this is what on. they asked me to do. So I'm Come like, Clissel Park all day, Clissel, yeah, bam. Brookwell. Yeah, and got to like chat on the sound system at Clissel mm. Park all day, and I'm like, this is it. And this is when rap's coming into its own as well. So we're like, do we drop the DJ Dancehall toasting thing and start rapping like, Yo, man, <laughs> all yankeed out, like mm -hmm. fully like, my name's Cool Rock Ski and all that kind of shit. And I remember on um, the radio, they had this Capital FM thing where you had to go to every underground train station and get a stamp. Mm. And there was a rapper there. He's a bad boy and he was in the Guinness Book of Records before Daddy Freddy. Okay. And his name's JC00 Sutton for fast spitting. Mm. And I was like, let me rap, let me rap, let me rap. Because I think the competition was breakdance, won the competition, got mm. the free t-shirt and shit, the free mm. hat. I was like, and he's on the mic doing like the Ice T thing did in mm. Beach Street, like rapping about what the break dancers are doing. I'm like, let me rap, let me rap. He's like, no, you can't rap. Being all greedy with a mic, like it's his thing. Mm. I was like, well, I'm better than you anyway, fam. Mm. So next thing I had a clash with him. That guy still shows me love. And I think moments like that come back to the ends. And the thing about not coming from London is I'm coming back to Andover Estate, Finji Park. Mm. And I'm going to the man named, yeah, I went on some mad thing. You should have come. And they went, you went where? South London? You don't go to South London. I'm like, what? And there's a next thing happening in West London next week. Like, there's a big all day thing going on Stonebridge. Mm -hmm. Like, come we go? And they're like, no, no, you don't go West London. And I think because of that, I was like, no, nah, I'll go anywhere I want. I'm not from mm. here. Like, mm -hmm. you lot don't teeth cars. You don't go shoplifting up West End. Like, there ain't nowhere where I don't go. But someone from the area who's into um, hip hop, I used to listen to Ranking Miss P, LWR Radio. Mm -hmm. And so it shows my age. This yeah, sh shows my age. Ranking Miss P was the first um, dancehall lady who got on the station. She, I suppose for your generation, she was our Jenny Francis. Okay. Yeah, you know, okay. like your lot's whole generation yeah. of Jenny Francis, Jenny Night Francis. Flight and Commander mm -hmm. B. Yeah. Well, she was our <laughs> Jenny Francis, Ranking Miss P on LWR. And we tune into her, and then there'd be this other brother who'd play like rap music from America. And there was Simon Harris and Tim Westwood. Mm. So I remember Westwood from LWR Radio. Mm -hmm. Like, he really did put in the work from day. Yeah, yeah, no, Westwood Because, been because there. Um, I was like, right, I, I'm hearing rap on the radio. Rah. And I think I met a friend from the estate. His name's Michael Johnson. And he was like, yeah, I'm a rapper. Mm. Like, I think he was like Nas 20 years before Nas. Mm. And he was from Finji Park and he produced and... Um, he used to be with another white guy who chatted dancehall as well called Rusty Ranks, mm. proper dancehall artist, DJ, mm. Irish heritage, ginger hair, Rusty Ranks, and he was bad on. And I think I was watching them, and then under his wing, he showed me, yeah, we can do this. Like, there's mm. little rap things and there's little rap competitions you can go to, like cassette tape them days there. We'd, you'd have to record an instrumental on a TDK90. Mm. Don't even know, like, or something, or record a, like... The B side of someone's record on the TDK night <coughs> to enter the rap competition. Yeah, press play on the tape and all them ones. So I think from a very early age, 11, 12, we was entering and killing all the rap competitions out there. Like, I'm thinking, yeah, we're the shit. Mm -hmm. and like, we felt like, yeah, we're superstars because we just went and rocked the crowd and uh, them times there, Club UN. 
It yeah, never yeah. used to be called Club UN. It was called something before then when we was kids. Um, yeah, it was. And they used to have a under 18s thing there. Mm. So we used to go there. Um, Westwood used to have an under 18s thing in Spats next to Astoria. Mm. And we used to go in there. So there was loads of like think, hip hop outlets. There was loads of outlets then. Mm. Mm. And the culture was thriving. The culture was strong. I must say, it's sad for the generation of the kids today. Yeah. Because me being a 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old, aspiring to be a musician, mm. there was outlets for us to go and shows for us to attend and go to Covent Garden on a Saturday, a cultural meetup, which was the epicenter cornerstone of mm. the culture in London, mm. meet rappers, meet graffiti artists, meet all kind of people. I mean, so the foundation before I come along, the foundation was strong. There was like MC Duke, mm. there was um, She Rockers, there was Moni Love, there was um, 20 Seconds to Comply, Silver mm. Bullet, Overlord X, I mean, the rap scene was strong. You know the brother who's um, in EastEnders? Black guy. He used to be in a rap outfit. And No, not Richard Blackwood. Way before Richard Blackwood. The old guy called Paul. I mean, so he was a youth when I was a baby. Like, So the hip-hop scene has always mm. been strong. The scene has always been flourishing. I'll tell you something. For me, growing up in my teenage years, by the time I got to 12, mm. something terrible happened to the whole scene, you know. I'm going to break it down. UK soul music had started to find its footing. Mm. Off the back of loose ends, Carl Macintosh, you had Jazzy B, soul to soul, mm -hmm. taking it to the world now. UK culture, the birth of the funky dread. Mm. Yankee them don't know about funky dread. No one don't know about funky dread. Mm, mm, mm. It's an English thing. It's if you go African centre on a Wednesday and do your little two-step shuffle and listen to rare mm. groove tune and rah, rah. So that was a vibe. And so I can say in the soul scene, you had loose ends and soul to soul. In the reggae scene, we had our Maxi Priest, we had our Aswads. We had oh, our, <clears throat> all of our scenes were starting to flourish and come strong. The UK culture mm. started identifying itself and that scene started coming strong. And there was people like the London Posse where they're like, yeah, that's our time. Okay. Like, Who's got the opportunity to rap about how we're rapping about Demon Boys, Mike J and Demon D mm. from Totti? You know, they set pace before anybody did mm. with um, recognitions what I'm looking. And Mike J was as much as a dance hall artist being from Tottenham as he was a hip hop artist, mm. breaking new waves in the UK and in the rap world. So everyone started to come up now. The UK rap scene, the UK soul scene, the UK reggae scene. We're all starting to find our footing of our industry. Mm. And then all of a sudden, I see it. I see it. Man. Walk, walk from us. Walk, I see it. And that happened. Mm. And we all died. Mm. So then, if you're a rapper, mm. especially rap on acid, mm. if you're a dancehall artist, Mm. Especially chat mic on acid. And if you're going to start singing, especially sing on acid. Because you see, every scene got killed. Mm. And the acid culture and the drugs that come with it. Mm. I'm 12 years old, sneaking into a dance dome, Tofnell Park. <laughs> <laughs> the dance is called Space, man, saying to us, hey, you two, you there. Like me and Adolf, my bedroom, it's powered every day. You two, you there. You ever took a disco biscuit? We're like, no, nah, what's a disco biscuit? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, swallow that. Look at eating. Let's see what it, yeah. What? Yeah, hey, right, fam, check this rap. Brrr, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, fam, listen to me rap now, fam. Mm. Brrr, mm. And I think that's where people are like, take it down, take it down, take it down. Mikey, M I K double E. And, you know, all of them were there. So I was like, I was like, what has happened to the culture? Yeah. But do you know what was my savior? Because mm. <clears throat> I was too inner as a you. Mm. That was my savior because. I took acid for about a year, 11 to 12. <laughs> mm -mm. Like, listen, until then, we was chipping in. Who's got a dollar? You got a dollar, you got a dollar. Might chip in and get a five pound draw. Mm. Yeah. If we've got two dollars each, might chip in and get a 10 pound draw. Buy a team for 750, mm. buy a little embassy number one and your mm. small red wrist nice. and roll a tree mm. screen. And that's how he was moving. Little can I, if you get a touch, little mm. peach can I, then <laughs> where's there. So getting a little wavy, there was a cost to getting wavy. Man come along and said, Fam, these things are a pound. You'll be wavy all night. You're going to see 
<laughs> you're going to see elephants in the sky and everything of all for a pound. So he's kind of like, yeah, you know what? We ain't quite got a fiver, but there's four of us. And we've mm. got four pound. Let's just get four of them. And started doing that. That took us on some magical missions. Of course it did. As it does. Mm. For about a year, where I was like, that's a mad thing. Then we was introduced to the Disco Biscuit. And we was like, that weren't trippy. That was more like, I love you. What? Never met you. I love you. <laughs> like, what's going on here? This is the best bass line I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I, remember, I remember being in the in the club, because this ain't music I even listen to. I don't even listen to music like yeah. this. I'm strictly bashment, rare groove, jazz, soul. Mm. Just, I'm in the club and the tune's going, if you want to ride, do, 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 do. ride a white horse. I'm going, a life up. <laughs> Jeez, what's going on? I'm going, check my rap over this with him. When I come in, you know that million mile an hour rap on my face, you're going, fam, that's fire. Spit that shit. I'm like, yo, I think we did about a year of that. Some property. Proper. Some and I was like, I was like, I'm talking about coming up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember going, so what? Uh, these dances happen in a big field off the Enzi. I'm 12, 13. Mm. I'm like, these dances happen in a big field off the Enzi. You got a phone a number. I get to some place, phone a number, rah, rah. And none of my friends weren't on it. Like, they all had to be <laughs> in bed at 10. They, they all had to be in bed at 10. Like, I'd see them all going, yeah, we're going home now. It's getting close to 10 yeah, and I'm going, mad. right. Because I've clapped a car and I parked it up at the back of the estate. I got mm. an old grandman's hat, mm. you know, flat cap like, and a mom. pipe. And put on some Your thick glasses. Mode. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on granddad mode. Like, I, I'm a farmer. Yeah, oh, that's my farmland. You know, like, if I'm going to mm. get pulled, I'm going to put on a Leeds accent and go on like I'm a farmer. Because there was some guy. We've been raised in, in a culture that's always been beaten over the head by the indoctrination of the Bible that's told us that funny man must be persecuted. Mm. I just decide for myself, you know what, I don't, that's not a problem on my agenda and I don't have any homophobic attitude whatsoever. Mm. Mm. And at them time there, some of my clientele was like, oh, you're of that nature. Mm. But yes, you can buy a drawer <laughs> and you will not suffer no homophobic <laughs> attitude from myself because mm. your pink pound is strong and I love that. Mm. See? Mm. So buy a little drawer and keep it moving. So one of them went to me, yeah, I, got, I can hook you up. Thousand E's for a thousand pound. Mm. Right, so I've got to drive to this festival now. Mm. Pull up. And I'm shutting these twenty pound each. I must have shot the first like eight hundred of them, and the, the other two hundred turned into a bag of dust. Mm. I'm just going around to the people who bought it, going, "Just dip your finger in and dab." Like I'm coming home, going, "How much money have I got? Oh my god!" Mm. You know, check, do the math, yeah. yeah, yeah come twenty on. pound is, and mm -hmm. it cost a pound each, and yeah, you just yeah. sold a, well eight hundred of them, two hundred mm. scrap. And I come back, I'm like, "Mum, got the belly." To mm. <laughs> yeah, um, belly. My eyes are wide. Like, Mum got the belly. She's like. What have you been doing? Have you been taking drugs? No, I'm a, you know, I wouldn't take no drugs. <laughs> and I think by the time it started getting like, all the men then wanting to go to Orange at Camden Palace and Orange at Hippodrome. Mm. And it came from the raves to the nightclubs now. And it was um, like people was going to um, Sunrise and Fantasia and all of these kind of raves. And they're all being held in, in warehouse raves and mm. Club Paradise. Mm -hmm. Heavens has opened now. Um, and like Hippodrome's popping off, Camden, Camden Palace is Palin. popping off. And all of my friends are like, yeah, we got to go Camden this weekend. Mm. Rah, rah, rah. And I'll be like, yeah, I'll come along because I'm into that. You lot are new to this. Mm. And I think as I phased out of it, they was just getting into it. So imagine I phased out of it by about 14. By the time my brethren who were my age got to about 16, 17, they're going to me, fam, have you ever taken a eat? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Mm. And I was like, yeah, I know about all that. Mm. And they, and it was all new for them. And I thought, so what, the circle died and come alive again? Because I was in it 1987, 88, 89. It's now 92 and you lot are back on it again. Now, the thing was, that music from Acid House to Jungleist to um, whatever they want to call it, Jungle, Dark Side, whatever, Long Dark Tunnel, Drum and Bass, mm. you know, Shire FX is my brethren from day. I watched him do that. With, yeah, big up Shire FX. But all, all through then, right, I was like, this ain't my music, fam. But because of that, every other music category in the UK suffered. Mm. Like, they, they were all put on hold. Reggae from the UK was put on hold. Soul from the UK was put on hold. So some of my friends are going, um, yeah, yeah. We want to go to this dance. And I'm going, no, I want to play Big Daddy Kane. You know, like after I'm coming out of them acid raves with them. Mm. 
they want to listen to Raw FM all night, Raw Mission and Sunrise FM and all of these acid house stations all night. Shouts out to this, shouts out to that. They sound like they come from the fair ride. Mm. You know them man there that work on the mm. fair ride? Hold tight, riders, let's go. Ladies, if you want to go faster, scream. I was like, mm. what well, kind of, this ain't rapping. But it was a UK identity because I'm like, who raps like they're from the fair ride? Mm. You know, like, hold tight, ladies, if you want to go faster, scream. Like, I was like, mm. this is a new thing because they're rapping like they're on the fair ride. Mm -mm -mm. This ain't how we rap. We rap like hip hop Yankees or like dancehall artists mm -mm -mm. Um, influenced by Yard. And that's how we do our twingy twang. And this is some hold tight, let's go, riders, ravers, inside, outside, mm -mm -mm. all around. And I was like, what is this fair ride MC and thing? I'd rather listen to me Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane just brought out, I get raw. I'm like, that's the real thing. Mm. So then I had a uh, being on my own. I'm there saying to my friends, you want to come to the Bashman dance? Mm. Papa San's coming, General Trees, Black Scorpio. It's going to be Sell Off, Base Odyssey, Kilimanjaro. Uh, all mm. them sounds are coming yeah. over to play. Who's like coming? Club. Nobody wants to come with me. Mm. And I'm there going, oh, well, differently. Kilimanjaro, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so I'm like, differently. Um, Anita Baker and Melissa Morgan are coming to perform. Uh, who's into that? No, they don't want to come. Like, well, differently, these rappers and them rappers are coming. Who wants to come? No, I was just on my own. Mm. They, they want to go Ayanapa. Uh, in, in fact, the time before that, it was Ibiza. They all wanted to go Ibiza before Ayanapa, innit? Mm. So where everyone's wanting to go Ibiza, I'm going, I want to go to like the St. Lucian Jazz Festival. Erica Badu's playing there. Stevie Wonder's playing there. Mm. And you lot want to go listen to Randall and Mickey Finn and Jumping Jack Frost and all them names. like. So I think it differed for me. So when I'm in the jungle dances and I'm ramping from foundation, anybody who's holding the mic, Navigator, Moose, Five-O, MC Det, Skibbity, any of them, man. got Skibber, man. I, I could hold mic and turn into a dance hall artist mm -hmm. over the Acid House anytime I want. The first ones to do it is Flinty Badman and um, Demon Rocker, Ragga mm. Twins. Mm. And they're like, we're getting paid off this. Fuck mm. trying to work for the Ragga promoter mm. who like won't even buy us a drink after we've done a full show or we go for the Acid House promoter and he gives us 500 quid each for doing 20 minutes. Mm. We know where our bread's buttered. So a lot of the dance hall art is converted onto that. Mm. A lot of the rappers converted onto that, MCs converted onto that. And it was a scene where he was getting paid. I remember bringing an American over. And he just saw a poster as he was driving past and he went, the Ilford Island Arena, man. 52 MCs, man. 17 DJs, man. What kind Aye. of night is that, Holmes? Because he's looking at it as an Aye. American rap point of view. Mm. 52 MCs on the night, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that, Joe, not, son. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, you don't get it. Like, all they do is pass my go, inside, let's go. <laughs> mm. And I knew that I could tan on Raga as good as any of these jungle MCs. Like you said, big up Skibber. Yeah. Big up Shabadi. Mm. Because me and Basco watched the creation of Shabadi become the monster. We mm -hmm. could have went that route. But I said, this is very dangerous. If I keep jumping up on the mic in these jungle dances, tanning up hard and tearing off the dance, I'm going to become an established jungle, jungle MC. MC. Yeah. And that's not my nature of where I can do that as good as the best of them. But, you know, mm. that I'm not a jungle MC. I love my rap. I love my hip hop. I thought it's important that I just just back from even taking the limelight. Them times there, I'm watching my little boys come up, Heartless Crew, mm, mm, mm. and music's changing. I'm like, yeah, they're doing their thing, and music is changing. Now it's, is it Garage, is it Grime, is it, yeah, you know, yeah. Heartless are coming through, um, Bigger Fish, and it was Pay As You Go, Cartel, mm. and I'm seeing the movement, and I'm going, the movement's going somewhere else now. Mm. But bear in mind, that's what I'm saying, even Wiley and that, Wiley come from Jungle Days as well, yeah. remember? Yeah. Wiley used to kill it in um so, jungle. So with with all cool. of that going on, I said Red I've Sephiroth. I've got to remain being skinny man. So you've got to know for a long time I'm looking for hip hop in the UK and it's starved and there's none. You can go to any jungle dance any day of the week. Seven days a week you can go to Acid House Jungle Dance. Mm -mm -mm. Right? And not sleep. And not sleep. Yeah, don't yeah. go sleep. <laughs> yeah, because there's a breakfast club after that. Then there's an after party. Then there's the next mm. rave that you could rave seven days a week mm. at a certain period of time and not sleep. And um, but could you find a hip hop dance? No. Could you find a, a proper bashman? No. You couldn't find could, a soul dance. Definitely not. Like and everything just closed and was sh uh, overshadowed. That's very important that our culture deals with that because mm -hmm. when we look at acid house starting. It made racist man and 
and people of ethnic minorities come together. Mm -hmm. It made rich and poor come together. Mm -hmm. It made people from private education and people from lower class backgrounds come together all in love. So that's why the government went, this is very dangerous here. How can we have the skinhead with the dread, with the kid from Eton, mm. with the kid from the council estate, and they're all in love together? This, this don't work for our agenda. Mm. And I started seeing how with Jungleists, it was kind of like, oh, the raggers are coming in. We don't like it. Mm. The raggers, the raggers are here. I know it's kind of like... Always getting too The black. undertone of institutionalised racism within the music culture, because I'll tell you something, it's almost like... They like to run off the minute the raggers come in. So the minute that they're doing it as acid house, it's one good thing. But the minute it becomes jungle and we're spitting over the mic and now we're wearing flashy machino off key with our Versace stunners and we're popping champagne at the club. And mm. you know what I mean? It's looking a bit like, like it comes from the Enzi. And it's the man from the Enzi holding up the corners looking slick with the mm. machino and the Versace and all the gallon clocking because we're popping champagne and yeah, you know how we get down. Mm -hmm. We even skank different. You know what I mean? <laughs> we even skank we swagger. It, we listen to the bass line, you lot listen to the drums. <laughs> yeah, and all of that. <laughs> it's true though. So with the cultural indifferences, I saw things like, yeah, well, do you know how to escape from all of those raggers that are taking over the jungle? How? <laughs> Let's go to garage. Let's go to garage. We'll go to garage. We'll go to the garage rave. There's no raggers there. Yeah. yeah. So they all run to the ra the garage rave and they went. And then the raggers come to. They all went. We're Ministry of Sound. There's no raggers here, is there? Yeah. Cool. Safe. Money. Miss Money Penny Promotions mm. and all them thing there. I remember hearing them Miss Money Penny Promotions. Mm. We don't hear them in the hood. You ain't hear. You hear RJR promotions, but you ain't hearing Miss Money Penny Promotions because they don't want us in. You understand? Mm. They don't want us in. Mm. They want their own thing, but we will always find our way in you, you and don't. take it and take over and make it ours. Yeah. So when yeah. Wiley was coming up and he realised, and I'm watching Channel U now and it's all starting, and I'm going, look at this lovely, beautiful musical culture that we have that's now being embraced and now Channel U's coming. And we're seeing them... Sorry, brother. We're going to get back to that, but before all of that, I want to get to the estate... Um, Council estate of mind and all that blood. You're saying in how like what was all that well, about? How I, did you I'm, get to I'm that? leading to that, but there's still a gap to come before that. So like I say, where everything was shut down, mm. Mm. where 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 mashing work on Camden Bridge mm. differently. And as far as everyone in the clique's got new shoes and a nice shiny Avrex jacket, mm. and now everybody's got food in their cupboards, mm. what next do we spend our money on? Make sure every kid who's got a hole in their shoes gets a new pair of Reebok Classics, sorted, certified. Make sure every hungry belly in the ends gets fed. Little halal burger for everyone. And now we're still making cream on top of that. Mm. So what we're going to do, what my heart desires. I'm going to hire a club. I'm going to make some flyers. And I'm going to tell everyone, we're putting on dances called the Mudlums. Mm. And it was a mud family thing. We started that in 1995. It's like holistic affairs, nobody cares, magic's going on everywhere People have got less stuff to share, next generation's must prepare And I'm well sincere when I do declare that we're getting more heartless year to year Who says big men don't shed a tear, they'll all be living under fear Kids on a wash truck, trapping off like top stops, giving chase with the guns Wanna lick trust, too many gridlocks, on the state blocks, heads wanna get propped Working on the new plots, how you gonna save what's yours when the bomb drops? What's it all worth when the heart stops? Hip hop's that's that way for me to say how we're all living by the day Okay Yeah Um this was when Bagley's was still Bagley's Warehouse. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> we done our thing in Bagley's Warehouse. We put on MCD, who, may I say, was the shining light for the UK. Big up mud firm, though. Mm. Well, was it, I think it was 57th Dynasty or something. 57th Dynasty. And, and Morris Delta. Morris Delta. Big up you, man. Can still. I say that we're all children of MCD? And I have to herald a man who deserves his flowers more than I do. You know, mm. like when it's time to get really real. Yeah. Mm. Who's more deservedly of their flowers than anybody? Mm. M I don't know M him. MCD. I don't know him. I weren't old now, enough for that, but I was well, old enough well, for Skinny Man, so Skinny Man can this, get flowers. This was at a time when well, I was You could give MCD flowers still. When I'm saying everybody was overshadowed by mm. the by the different music, mm -hmm. MCD stayed at it. Mm. But he was also... Where's he from? West London. Okay. And he was you going... about MCD? No. MC Darren, Silent Eclipse. And he was going big, to the... He big, was, he, big, big. Because you're schooling me. Yeah. yeah. Darren, Schooling MCD, me, Silent yeah. Eclipse, if you hear his lyrics, mm. therefore today. Silent Eclipse? Yes. I, you know what? When I was researching MCD. you, mm -hmm. now I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I saw um, Silent Eclipse, but he um, he's like a KRS-One. He's like very, yeah. or yeah. Um, 
he stayed studying he, he, in the he, ministries of the tabernacle. He's like um, and go. Well, you understand? He, 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 he deep, was going deep stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Not really like he's no, literally real deep stuff. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Real deep like, stuff. Was, like I can't explain it. Like rap. With you lots error. Can, can we just, was can, we just lyrics, break, lyrics. can we just break something down about deep stuff and not deep mm. stuff? Mm. If I was to go on deep stuff about Pfizer and vaccine and this and that and who it's made by and population control and all them things there, really rat out and you'd mm. be like, yo, skinny smokes then weed there and he goes deep. You know? That's like that right? deep guy. But if I keep you shallow with it, so you can understand my depth, and this is leading mm. to why I made counsel the state of mind. Mm. If I could keep you shallow with it, so you can stay within my depth, I can ask you this. Fam, does your school go? Your kid goes to school, but they don't want to give him free meals, but they want to give him vaccine. It's not so deep, fam. Mm. So you understand when you simplify things. Mm. Now MCD is a deep one, mm, mm, mm. so he's a scholar mm. who opened my mind and obliterated mm. me with I see, knowledge. I see a thing with you, MCD, and someone else. Black Twang. Black Twang. Yeah, Black Twang. Black Twang. I see. And, it. and that was in nineteen ninety-seven. Who goes? It's my crush to MCD. I crush mics. I don't want no shit in me, no mad cows. The truth teller, the good fella, no salmonella. Yeah, no one can put it better. Make your own business, employ our young. They're putting gelatine in sweets, drinks, and bubble gums. Make your own sweets without no pork inside. Make your own clothes without no animal hide. Don't well, and um, he's, he's deep though. Yeah, he's very yeah. deep still. So, like I say, in all throughout the time where I said our culture was overshadowed, mm. acid house, mm. he kept shining the torch. He was the light that kept shining, mm. and his lyrics was knowledgeable. He was on the tune with you and KRS One as yes, well. Yes, he's on the tune with me and KRS One. Yeah. So he kept the light shining. We must herald that man for UK hip hop for even to stay alive. Now he can get flowers still. I see. So when I started, um, he can get on, flowers for that big moustache yeah, still. Yes. No, he's a real one. That he, moustache he, he's, a, mad, he's a real one. He can get flowers, <laughs> he's a, he's get flowers for his moustache. He's mustache a real too. one. Sorry, Cream, but his moustache was over his Yeah, it was out there. Lip. He's a he's real one. Top lip. But big up MCD. But a fam. A anybody who's older than me know MCD mm. as the realest there No, 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 he's hard. He's hard. He's deep. But council is state of mind, Frank. So, what, so watch this. Fam. So we're on, we're, we're on Camden Bridge. We're mashing it. We're on Camden Bridge and we're mashing it. How did you get from Stokey to Camden now? Well, so I thought you was from Finsbury Park as well. From Stokey, we were squatters. Mm. So we were squatting. So by the time we got temporary accommodation, was in Andover Estate. Mm. Or was that another squat? It was another squat in Andover Estate. Okay. And then we got housed in Six Acres Estate, which is Finsbury Park. They're both. Mm. And that was when I was ready to start secondary school. Mm. I was due to go to Stoke Newton Secondary School. Mm. And in the first week, they said, no, your new house is in an attachment area. You go to George Orwell now. Mm. Which is um, Finger Park, George Orwell School, mm. and um, so where and Camden was just like yeah. People told me the hustles in Camden. We go where the money's at. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And Camden was a vibe. What people talk about what Portobello Road used to be. Camden was that before then, and was what Soho was. It I was think like, Camden's still a vibe. It's always going to be a vibe. It, vibe it, it, it never sleeps. It's itchy town. <laughs> it never sleeps. Um, when Kings Cross got done with the smoking thing, mm. they all came to Camden. So Camden's very nitty and itchy. No, R.I.P. R.I.P. Soldier, man. My we got nigga, Soldier, man. come R. on. R.I.P. Nathaniel, man. Camden, man. Nathaniel's a G, man. Yeah, Camden G soldier, to the man. NZ. We got Soldier, man. And um, RIP, shouts man. out to Nadine, Soldier's sister as well. Love to the family. Yeah, man. Um, what was I going to say? So, we're there in Camden mashing it, and there ain't nothing to do. I'll be rapping on the corner just because I like to. Like, I'm mm. not rapping for anyone. I'm rapping for my own mental health, if anything, in between mm -hmm. licking shots. Yeah, yeah. And we're stacking. We've got our peas. Everyone's nice. So we're like, we go to this corner and there's some guys from Deptford Broccoli. And um, they're called Baskervilles and Baskerhounds and all that. And you could tell that they're very like, you know, when Wu-Tang came out, they were very, <laughs> yes, son. And like <laughs> grave diggers and the big <laughs> killer fangs and the nice zigzag braids and the big jackets and the big Timberland boots. Mm. They, they look like something in between Black Moon and Wu-Tang, you know what I mean? It's like, mm. yo, so we're the Baskervilles. Yeah. I'm like, yeah? Where are you not from? Like, yeah, Broccoli. Broccoli, Deptford, South. I'm like, oh, bless you. I'm like, what are you doing there? They're like, yeah, we're going to put a dance on in, um, I think it was called Club WKD in Camden. That little bar there in Camden. Yeah, I know you too. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, what time is the dance going to start? Yeah. Dude, I've got to get a load of this. So I've gone in there and I'm like, where are these heads from? Because pure hip hop heads looking like they're wearing puffer jackets and you know them woolly hats that have got the peaks on? Mm. Mm. Like, like I'm wearing in the Council of the State of Mind video. Like mm. them kind of straight New York swagger I'm seeing about the place. Cause all I'm seeing, up until, all of my thingy 
Mm. His man wear tight jeans with funny patterns on, machino shirt and matching jeans and, you know what I mean, London set the trend, we don't dress like them Yankee there, we got pure swag, you understand? They don't know about London man swag. Mm. We set the trend, they mm. copy, you understand? Mm. And um, so they're all wearing New York clothes, like, yo son, yo son, hip hop, we're nice. They're all like that kind of crowd. And I'm like, who are these guys? And I went, yeah, put my name on the, on the, they said we're going to do an open mic battle. You can put your name up on the thing. This is where mm. the freestyle clashing started mm. before any, you know. And I thought, what, well, if you've got to get a name, this is the only way you can get on a mic. And they would write from the crowd five subjects from the crowd and put it on the board. And then you put your name down to be on the MC list and everyone's mm. put against each other and you've got to rap about there and the crowd will be the judge. You, you get the most applause, you go through. And blah, blah. Mm. I was like, really? This is how it works? Oh, I've got to go up. And everyone's rapping. I'm like, yeah, it's my turn to go up. I'm rapping. That's a little bashment swag in my rap and everyone's going wild and tearing off the place and like where it's a clash as well. I was like, oh, I remember I'm from a time where I didn't know about cussing mums. I had to learn that fast. So I was mm. like, rapping, battling is just cussing. I had an unfair advantage on anybody from the hip hop background that I ever clashed. I'm from Shabba versus Ninja. Mm. I'm from, you yeah, understand, I'm from Supercat running Ninja off stage. I'm from dancehall. I'm from the real clash element. Like the clashes that I've watched and how I've watched. You. If you go on stage in Jamaica and you ain't cutting it, you're dead. Mm. You're, you're a dead man. So I know about clashing and the elements of Shabba versus Ninja and Supercat versus Ninja and the clashes that I've seen. When I first thought, right, you're putting me up in these clashes. Mm. Do you know what? I feel sorry for anybody in my path. <laughs> Because I'm just gonna turn super cat on them. Mm -mm -mm. That I know who I've learned through and who which ranks I've come through. Mm -hmm. And I'm a good rapper and I freestyle off the top of the head, like make up as we go along. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is about. I just went there and killed everybody that was like, yeah, the prize money's £100. I'm like, good, spend it on the bar. Who wants a drink? Like, we just, mm -hmm. we're earning bags on that bridge. I'm like, but you lot are putting on, when's this next one? They're like, we do it every month. So I'd go there every month and just smash every MC on the border. <laughs> that's when, um, People like <laughs> people like Fallacy, yeah, Fallacy I started. Fallacy. I love Fallacy. We link up with Tubby T. Big up, come on, oh, yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Tubby, Tubby you know, T. Come, come on, on. and um, so Fallacy and Tubby T doing their thing. He used to come to the battles. I'd smash Fallacy to bits. I'd smash anyone to bits. You know what I mean? I'd be like, mm. who dare? Like, who the hell thinks they're even bright enough? Mm. So then we started putting on our promotions, and other rappers wanted to rap, but they didn't want to clash. And I thought, I understand that. Some fly little girl. She's, I think she's a heavy rapper. You know what I mean? She didn't sing them times there. Strictly rapper. We said, listen, I think you're so good. I would like to pay you a wage and put your name on the flyer to rap at our dance. Now, the thing about our dance is... Sound like you was on it, but It's because it's hood money. Sound like you wanted something else, but go on. No, I won't. Sound because like it was, no, no, not at all like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> them times that I'm, that ha I'm, ha twang I'm happy. I'm happy. No, no. Yeah, you're on a no, I'm twang. just showing you certain artists we mm. bust before they bust. Yeah, yeah. This is hood money coming from the hood. Mm. We're nice. So we're putting on a free dance where mm. it's free entry. We've got loads of prize yeah, giveaways. Nice. We've got loads show. of yeah, prize we... giveaways. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so this is what we did with the money. We put on a free dance, mm. free t-shirt on entry, free bag of giveaways, free mm. CDs, open mic competition, prize money for the winner. Mm. Blah, and Property. all of this. Yeah, like... We just look after the hood with the hood money. Mm -mm -mm. But the young lady who I'm talking about became Estelle. Yeah, okay. That's why I'm saying it weren't oh, that, it was yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, see, it's simple. So you, 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 can ask Black, you can ask Black Twang, did anyone ever pay him to perform on stage before we did? Mm. You can ask MC Ty, God bless his soul, rest yeah, in peace. Right time, man. Did he come and get paid wages to perform when people wouldn't even pay a rapper a penny? Mm. Mm. And it was a way for me to say, as artists, Mike GLC will tell you, they will all tell you. Big as artists, what I wanted them to know is if I'm a little kid from the hood and I'm going to pay you a wage to rap on stage for me, don't take no less from no one else. Mm -mm -mm. Let that be a lesson to you to know your worth and okay. your credibility and mm -hmm. your integrity as an artist. So we bust all of the artists that come in my generation mm -hmm. by putting them on a platform. If they didn't have an audience, no one would know about them. We gave them an audience. We mm. gave them a platform. Mm. Creating that was so important to my heart. Mm. Because one thing I've always known, Spray, since I was so high, mm. 
the, there's superstars in our areas all over. Yeah. We've always got superstars of every age. We, we're so talented in our ghettos. Yeah, yeah, cool. But no 100%. one never gives us a chance. I used to look I at agree. America and they go, oh, you got a cousin and she can sing? Because I've got an uncle, he's a manager. Yeah, exactly. And he's got a friend who owns a studio mm -hmm. and they know a promoter. And it would just come together like Voltron yeah. mm -hmm. in America. And I'd look at us and go, what happened to us? Yeah. Oh, you got a friend who's a, who's a rapper? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that'll be it. That's, that's nice. It. Never gonna ever. Mm. Like, listen to my sister no sing. She's as good dots. as Alicia mm. Keys. Lovely. Okay. No one's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No one went connecting dots. So for us to try and get in a studio, we're like, who do you know who owns a studio? Oh, well, you gotta pay big money to get in a studio, oh, right? Man. We got big money then, put on big money. We're, we pressed our independent things and did our independent things. We've got our own releases from 1995 that we put out. Mm. We was kids taking hustle money. Studio weren't cheap them times. Going to a pressing plant to even get a dub plate at Music House weren't cheap. Mm. To press up your records and try to sell them, were, it was a joke. Nobody even wanted to sell your records for you. Mm. So we're coming from a time that if you didn't do it for the love, don't do it. Mm. Because this thing is only generating on love alone. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like if you've got a hungry belly, you better be satisfied with eating some humble pie sprinkled with love on top because that's all we got here. Yeah. Mm. You know, like no one weren't doing it. So the disillusion that we would see is a lot of kids looking overseas, seeing the rapper who's just come out, mm. not knowing that the car's hired, not knowing that the, ju the, the jewelry's hired and he don't own them jewels. And if he did, it was an advance from the, you know, and like, when you hear a, a million pound record contract, Wow, a million pound record contract. Yeah, so that'll probably leave you about 50 grand in debt somehow. What? How, mm. do, how does a million pound record contract leave you 50 grand in debt? And all these things. I started working out everything from a road angle, from a youth, from road. Like mm. this industry is the biggest slave trade entrapment that they do to their artists. That if it was a bank doing it, they'd be put out of practice for extortion. Mm. But record companies can do this. Mm. So none of us had a hope in hell. Only when these majors wanted to promote or sign someone mm. or make someone a superstar. When I started coming up, Council of the State of Mind, mm. this is when, I'll tell you something, Spray. I had already give up hope, yeah? I did my thing for the hood. I paid my dues. Mm. I said my biggest ambition in my life is to fill a dance in my ends with my people then and have a great night. Mm. And I did that at the age of 16. Big. Where do I go from there? Mm. Mm. You understand? So from there, I started realizing my hopes and my dreams was kind of crushed. And I'm on road, I'm going to jail, I'm coming bing, I'm doing this, I'm doing you that. Love as you do. Enough. So you let me tell you something. Love it, but go on. Mm -hmm. Please stop. <laughs> every time I'm in the please ville. Please stop drawing me up. Every time I'm in the ville, you, please, you, you please, just come please in. Please love drawing me up. When you can add up your life, when you get to a certain age and go, one minute, have I done more years behind the door than I have out? Oh no, this is wrong. For if when you I done my you know, research, when you add up your life and you say, you done, you done more, more time, he said, he's done more time in prison <laughs> than in secondary school. Yeah. That's what he said on the Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. It, if you can add up your life when you get to a certain age and say, I've done more years behind the door than I have as a free man. Mm. Mm. Things after, you know, mm. but we do what we do because we have to survive and we have mm. to eat and our opportunity isn't there. And so... At the time when I was doing all of the clashing and the open mic shit and all that, let me show you how it went down. People don't know this story. The, the real ones who was with me on the roadside mm. know this story. Someone said to me, yeah, they want to give me a record contract. I'm like, this is all like when I'd kind of give up on the idea of it. Mm. I've gone past my mid-twenties now. And I'm thinking, it's for the kids now. And they're spitting this new thing. Is it g g garage? Is it uh, uh, urban? Mm. You know, and grime and leave it to the Wiley and the pay as you go cartels and the big and heartless crew and them. Mm -hmm. It's their time now. The youth man, them. I've done my thing and I'm happy with where I'm at. Mm. I get birded again. And I'm in there and I'm thinking, nah, man. Shit, man. Can't just be, you know what I mean? Got to break the cycle. And this guy wants to sign me for a record company. No word of a lie. I'm like, really? This is the real thing? He's like, yeah. They've heard about you rip mic, open mic sessions. Hey, you're the best rapper in London. No one can't clash you on the mm. mic. You've held the thing. You've held the torch for years. And rah, rah, rah. I'm like, all right, let's do it proper then. So I start thinking in my head big because it's an A&R who's been watching me for a couple of years. Mm. 
who's put his all into putting it on the on the line, saying, this is the guy I want to sign and I'm putting it all on the line to take mm. all my risk on this guy here. Mm, mm, mm. Like, you sure? He's like, I'm fully sure. They I'll, package I'll, you will. I vouch my life on it, right? So they went, all right, we're going to sign him. 2001, 9th for the 11th, like the 11th for the 9th, because we say it the other way around. Mm. And I'm all feeling bossy, like he said, yeah, you, it's going to be a million pound deal. I'm thinking how my video is gonna look. I'm like, I'm gonna get an old terrace house from Chapel Town. Mm. I'm gonna get skinheads and dreads in it, and I'm gonna get them old toys that we used to play with with the parachute man that don't work and just fall straight down. You know, mm. like all the toys from my age group and kids in Wellington boots with baby bottles and pissy wire fronts yeah, you and had Ford it. Cortinas, you had and I will have Rodigan on the on the deck. You know what I mean? Like I, I've visioned my whole how it's gonna mm. be like for my first single and and all the package and all that. The night before, he's like, yeah. So I said, can I bring a draw? Smoke a thing there. He's like, mm. yeah, yeah, you can bring a draw, smoke a thing there. Good, good. I had some high-grade Cess Westmoreland. Mm, proper thing. Proper thing come in the, in the goat cheese. Mm, mm, mm. I never said that. Cool enough. But yeah. Mm. Proper thing. That the <laughs> was like, mm. From North Weezy, by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to say no more than that. Yeah. Big up the Indian man, them. <laughs> we run things with the shipment. Yeah. And um, so I had the proper thing. I'll tell you whose album had just dropped and I couldn't get enough of it. Black woman and child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. So the man had said to me, the man had said to me, yeah, you can bring a little joy. I'll bring a CD if you want to play some music as well. Mm. I only had one CD (laughs) because I only needed one CD in my life. Mm. The Black Woman and Child album. uh, Sizzler just dropped. No word of a lie. I'm getting goose pimples telling you this now. So I'm there with my mum. On the spliff, like, yeah, yeah, tomorrow's the big day. She's like, yeah, I'm gonna iron your outfit, make things nice. I said, yeah, they got this Addison Lee kind of van coming to pick me up in the morning. Now, I mean, don't know how it's gonna go down. Mm. Get there in the morning, Hammersmith by the river, you know, just where the water goes over. They got some big building in there, mm. Universal Island Records and all that. It's all big building, bash, bashy thing. Like, step out the Addison Lee, walk up the stairs. Black guy in his security uniform, mm. looking all wham at the door. Like, Excuse me, I'm here at the right building. He went, so you're not on skinny, man. I've been a fan of yours for years. <laughs> I went, don't I? I was like, is it? He went, yeah, they're expecting you got to go to the blah, blah floor. I'm like, yeah, it's like that. Yeah, flesh, yeah. He went, good luck. Make the most of it. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, trust me, fam. And mm. so I'm on yeah. our bus, blood. What? Get up in the building. Get up into this executive office. You know, like them things from them, you watch them movies there and the, the table goes so far with like 24 chairs around it. Mm. And then a big executive thing and the big screen at the back with the TV and that. I walk in and I see like um, two little black girls sat there. And from I walked in, they was kind of giggling. I'm like, what's that funny? You want to let me in on a joke? And they're introducing me to the American people. Yeah, this blah, blah, this blah, blah. You know, them big cigar look like J.R. Ewing. Mm. Hi, son. Welcome to the company. Uh, you know what I mean? They signed a check and all that. And um, done the signing. I said, can I buy my spliff now? He went, yeah. I went to feel my ting, ting in there. Oh, shit. Stress. And the two little black girls that were laughing, I think that they were part of the PR team or something. Mm. They went, and when you walked in, this thing flicked out your leg and rolled right up to our feet. It's right here. I went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I went yeah, Villa Smith. They went, yeah. We could play music and that they started popping champagne. Champagne bus. So what? It's about nine in the morning. Mm. Like champagne's bus, roll my set spliff, light it up. It gets on to some guy comes running in the room and goes, yo, put on the news right now. We're like, why, what's up? Mm-mm. They put on the news. We're seeing a plane hanging out the building. Like, yo, mm. what the fuck? Now, remember, they've got that cinema TV in that big executive room. Oh, Fox okay. News or whatever, yeah. CNN, yeah, I understand. Yeah. It was just 9-11, I just they remember just, the they news. They just, put on this, they just put on this screen and all we can see, like, remember, it's cinema-sized screen thing. We could just see a plane look, um, hanging in the it. building. And we're going, what? What? And there's people in the room going, I've got family in that building. You know, because they're all the Americans that have come over for the signing. They're like, I've got family in that building, man. I'm like, what? And as we're looking, we just see, yeah, bush. The next one crashed right in Mm. as we're watching. So we're like, whoa. And everyone's looked at each other and it's like, yeah, meeting done. Guess what tune was playing? Mountains Around Jerusalem, like by Sizzler. I was like, like Mountains Around Jerusalem, Sizzler. 
and Nostradamus said the man-made mountains, the twin brothers of New Jerusalem shall crumble at their peril. Yeah, this is all a bit deep. I'm out of it. And like that was the meeting done. Case of champagne that they didn't want. Took back to the ends on the park, let all of them and then bust the champagnes mm. and that. So now nah, I'm thinking, that was weird. Mm-mm. What you don't know is that I got a court case in two weeks because mm. they caught me with a belly and I got bail for it. Like, I used to never get bail. I was always reminded till I got mm. to court. And I was on bail and I'm hearing this guy wants to sign me. I'm like, yeah, go on. I got my first instalment and my check. <laughs> I run with that check. I went, mum, no matter what happens, that's yours. You know what I mean? Mm. That's you. And um, went to court. I think they gave me like two and a half years. Mm. Yeah, I was like, all right, then. sorted. Could have been a contender, Charlie. Mm. And I thought, well, um, so then the brother comes to visit me, the A&R guy. Mm. And his face looks so distressed. I'm like, fam, it's me that's got the bird. Mm. How comes you look, sir? How's your face looking like that? And I'm the one who's got the, I'm the one who's got the bird. Mm. Right? He's coming, he's went, fam, they've dropped the whole label. Like Island Universal, who own all of these subsidiaries, their urban department in England mm. had signed Galliano, Ronnie Size, MJ Cole, Elizabeth Troy, um, and big names as well, like that was all on their roster. Mm. Uh, they all got dropped, the whole label got dropped. Because when them Americans came over, they was kind of like, so who's S Club 7? And who's, mm-hmm. you know, and, like and, went, and went that way. They went the mm. S Club 7 way, who all went nowhere. Mm. And actually all of the artists that dropped ended up bossing. Mm. MJ Cole, um, yeah. Ronnie Size, mm. uh, Elizabeth Troy, and all, all of them people ended up having a good career. And um, so, yeah. I, so I'm sat in jail and I'm going, 29 and it's a rap like if i could have wanted to be a rapper i kind of lost the idea about 25 i'm 29 now Mm. i'm about to do a two-year bird and i sat there and it lit me almost as if to say i missed my chance to say one and two things so i started taking the back of apps Mm. and i'm there going when you, you're lying on your bed and you're sad at night, and you just can't get to sleep, and you're like, those who know it, know it because they've been through things that I've been through. Mm, you write that little line down. You write the next little line down. You're like, you know, I've got a little 16 there. Mm. Started writing on the back of apps. When I came out of jail, I was like, I've got all these apps. Do you know half of them they didn't let me bring? Mm-mm. Because they were like, oh, that's prison property. Mm-mm-mm. Like, because it's written on apps. Yeah, they yeah, weren't yeah. going to let me have my lyrics. They was like, that's written on prison property. You can't have that. I'm like, yo. Took that and that. I had some, some of the, it was in a Kellogg's box, you know, when you buy the cereal, um, Sugar Puffs box. And um, so that's how they didn't get them ones. And I've come out and then one or two people are playing me a rhythm. And I'm going, yeah, I got one. That verse kind of goes with that 16, that kind of goes with that. So I started putting them together and my ideas together. And I knew that for me, it weren't about the rap thing, but I kind of writ all of these poems. Man's got the rhythms. Let me put them together. The cancel estate of mine kind of happened like an accident. Mm. Mm. It was a film that I had watched when I was a youth. I remember going through the Young Offenders thing and all of that. And he goes, look, you could have ended up in um, Simmons' house in mm. the Borstal, but you're too old for that now because you're 16. So you're mm. going to go to Young Offenders Institution. Round and round you go, prison, an animal. Out of prison, no job, bruh. And I remember that film was resignated. Now that film was starring Tim Roth, who was playing the role of a young racist little skinhead nf so okay. people was always like did i use the film because i felt like me and him connected i'm like of course i don't connect with some racist nf mm. Mm. but what i did connect with was what his youth worker said to him just yeah. before he went to jail mm-hmm. and i thought i always wanted to use that so when i was doing my tracks i thought yeah i did want to use some of that speech there how does that blend in and i'm writing this track and i'm taking that little piece of the speech and i'm like that fits in there better than I could have ever imagined. Mm. In fact, that little bit that he says ties that track to that track perfectly. And then I'm getting all the little bits that he's saying and I put them all together and I went, you know what? This is what I would have wanted to have said. Mm. Mm. And this is it, Council of State of Mind. I've recorded the album. Then I've got another jail 
case coming up in it. Mm. I know I'm going away again. I think I got caught with like two boxes of brush or something like that. So I know it's a go bye wise. These times now they're going, yeah, do you know you can get up to like 14 for, because it's like, your whatever. Yeah, and giving me all of that because yeah, like they're saying, if you've been caught with intense supplies so many times, we could start giving you the heavy ones for it mm -hmm. now. Like whatever, yeah. I ended up getting um, an 18, 18 moon. moon. Yeah, Imagine I got, if I thought yeah, you was I got an 18, 18 moon, moon for, for two boxes of merch, right? No. What it was, just before I went away, there was a kid called Greg Hall, young student living in my NZ. So he's like, oh, I know that this rapper called Skinny Man lives around the way. And I've heard his music and I like it. Nothing from my album because that hadn't came out yet. He's like, I want to make an independent film. They've given me my budget as a university student to find somewhere to live for the year and to eat for the year and that. He went, but I'm taking it all and just putting it on this film. You know, mm. I'm just putting it all on red in the casino. And I was like, good on you. Like, that's what makes proper film guys. Mm. You will be that guy you want to be if you're so determined. So we did a film called The Plague and asked me to be like the cameo radio presenter in this film. Mm. Whilst doing it, he's went, yeah, and I'll shoot you a rap video if you want. I'm mm. like, all right, for what tune? Yeah, there's one tune I got finished. So I kind of did the <laughs> little walking along the balcony, the bit in the lift and the bit coming mm. down the stairs and kind of forgot I... I've gone and done my bird and forgot I even did that, you know, spray. Mm. Like, this is what you got to know. Yeah. I've gone and done my bird. And on this bird, do you know how I'm feeling? I'm feeling every bird so far was so active and looked after a big group of social circles that I could always say to someone, I need you to drop a V, I need you to put some money in, I need you to do this, I need you to do that. Mm. This, this bird, I was like, not sending no one a VO. Not even phoning no one. Mum would come and say, you want to hold a techie in your cell for the night and make your calls? I go, to phone who? And say what? Hi, I'm here, you're there, bye. Like, no. And mm. I just kind of went a bit recluse. Mm. So when I come out, I'll tell you how recluse I went. I didn't even shave or trim. Mm. I just decided I'm going to be like one of those mad Irish men on the hunger protest. You know how they look mm -hmm. mad off. I'm there with a the big beard now and the big hair, just look, Jumanji's on the landing. Mm -hmm. People wouldn't even recognize me if they, you know what I mean? They'd be like, what? That's skinny. <laughs> you skinny. Like, like, yeah, you wouldn't recognize me. I look like Jumanji because they're sending me all up north and all them places there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just looking like Jumanji. I come back out, straight to the barbers, straight for my trim. I went, what? It's carnival this weekend. <laughs> it's carnival this weekend. I want everything brand new socks, pants, trainers, mm -hmm. tracksuit, trim. Get me a fat drawer. Fresh. We're going carnival. So I've done that. And I'm at carnival, like, yeah. Still feeling like I'm known in the ends. I've done my little rap thing. I've done my freestyle battling and this and that and this and that. Mm. I'm walking through carnival. See a couple of you just go, yes, skinny man. Done though. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chew that. Walking <laughs> past, couple more years. They're like, well, I'll go on skinny. I'm like, yeah, come on. <laughs> like, walking through a couple more alleys and this gang of Somalian youths who I knew I didn't know from nowhere come up to me and went, whoa, skinny, and kind of mugged me. I think they had a bit tipsy and that. They kind of went, whoa, skinny, real one, you know. They started jumping around, like, check out the Mali gang, just call them, I'm up. I'm like, fam, how do you know me? Mm. They went, channel you, in it, Channel you, can't the state of mind. I'm like, can't the state of mind, channel you. I've turned to my bedroom, he's went, oh yeah, your video's on this thing. Like, no one even let me know. And because I kind of recluse, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. I forgot I even made that video. Imagine that. Trust me, Spray. Mm. You know when it was just a buzzing day that I took a day off the trap to go do this brother's like, film, pretend to be the radio DJ, and he's went, mm. yeah, walk mm. down the balcony, rap to camera, rap in the lift. Right? I didn't know he went and edited it all to the track and made it complete and all that, and then put it out to channel you. Mm -hmm. mm. I just Did thought you. I had my chance, could have had my chance, didn't have my chance. Now I'm back in. Never but Brock, mum, did you spend all that money? Yeah. So that, yep. Yeah. So everything's done. <laughs> <laughs> everything's done. Yeah. We're back to basic. I'm a grown man. I'm 29. I'm mm. riding at 18. I'll be out when I'm 30. Rapping. Rapping? Mm. He's mad. Mm. Rapping weren't even a thing. And I've come out and I've got these gang of Somalian <laughs> youths at Carnival going, Skinny my dog! Jumping all over me. I went, you don't know me. Wait. It's not like they've mm. been to a rap session or mm. see me on a... Mm. Hood incarcerated DVD or one mm. of them streets incarcerated DVDs or nothing like that. I'm like, they don't know me. They went, channel you in it, cancel the state. And the brother I'm with, he's went, oh yeah, they play your video on this new channel. I'm like, what? New channel? He's like, yeah, channel you. I'm like, what's going on for that? I had never seen channel you in my mm. life. Like, that was the time it had come out whilst mm. I was riding that 18. Mm. And I've gone, I went, so how do we get to see this thing? He's went, whoever's got Sky in their house, hood laws, hood rules. 
You get Sky, you cancel the subscription, and you've still got Channel U. Is that how it used to work? I'm sure, like, Some for the people I know, I go around their yard, I'm like, have you got Channel U? They're like, it's easy. You subscribe to Channel to Sky Television. Mm. They come with this thing, they give you a box with all the channels, and then you say, nah, I don't want to subscribe no more, but you're still left with a whole heap of channels that you ain't got to pay for, and Channel U was one of them. Mm. So we're going, right, whose yard has got Sky TV? Go around their yard. I'm sat there. I'm building a spliff. And for ages, I'm there waiting for my tunes to come on because they're telling me, yeah, they play your tune every hour. I'm seeing one guy go, all she wants to do is make fish and chips. This guy called Marga Man about his English gal and all she wants to do is making fish and mm. chips. I'm like, what? This is mad. Then I'm looking at others. Then I, then I see Lethal Bizzle like, pow, pow. That was coming on. I was like, mm. yeah, this is hard. And it looked to me like anybody with a phone could go, go on, start spitting. Mm. And we'll send it into Channel U. And if people like it, they'll play it every hour. Mm. So I think where my video was kind of semi-professional, mm -hmm. it was like, it was on the basis of people voting for it that keeps it on rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So I didn't know none of this. So then I'm there and it's come and I went, oh, now I remember I was wearing that jacket and that hat. Where is that jacket and that hat by the, you know, you do mm -hmm. your little bird and you come out and nothing's there again. So I'm looking at the video, I'm going, yeah, that's right. The Brian Avericks, where is that jacket? Where is that hat? Oh yeah, I shot a video, rah, rah. And they're like, yeah, people are feeling you, you know, like your thing, rah, rah. And I went, well, really? Because we kind of made an album. How are we going to put it out? And that's when there weren't no idea of putting it out. And this low life guy came along and people are like, yeah, um, people are putting out their music on this guy's label and he's from Leeds. I'm like, from Leeds, is he? Okay. Checked him out. He's like, yeah, don't you remember me? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, I was a year younger than your sister in school. And I'm like, all right. Okay, ain't no road man. You know, mm. if man think man could rob man, he's like, this man could never rob no one. Mm. You get what I'm saying? This man robbed us all. This man took the belly and ran. Mm. Like, little beknownst to me, mm. I just thought, you know what? We're kind of naive. We're on road. We're trying to mash works on a bridge that's over. They've shut down Camden Bridge. That's you'd just be silly to go there again. You know what I mean? And mm. like some eagle eye operation. When did you get shot? Zero from? tolerance. Huh? When did you get shot? Oh, that was the same night that Phil Mitchell got shot on EastEnders. What year was that? Fuck not, like, it was that same night. Okay. I remember everybody being sat in the house going, oh, yeah, they said um, Phil Mitchell was going to get shot what on happened? EastEnders tonight. How did tonight. you get shot, though? How did, <laughs> how did you even get shot? What was that about? One time was when they was coming into the yard when Phil Mitchell, um, we had just finished watching the EastEnders, doom, 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 mm. and a door knocked. And it was a house full of women and kids. Mm. And um, I think someone went, I'll get it. <laughs> you, know, you know, just mm. trying to be helpful. No, 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 I'll get it. Next thing you know, gunmen are coming through the hallway. Blood. Ballied up. Mm. And I've kind of turned around and I went, nah, mate, this ain't no Phil Mitchell team. This ain't right in here. And just ran at them, innit? Mm. So as I ran at the brother, he just squeezed off. Mm. And I've kind of, I see, his, I see him squeeze off. So I just went like that. Like, it was point blank. He squeezed mm. off from there. Because mm. I think I just kind of went to run it. And he mm. squeezed off and he's like that. So it just bush in through my neck there. Okay. See where I got a tattoo? I got the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I got I see. the chain. Yeah, I see, I see. Around the tattoo. Um, to say you're only as strong as your weakest link. Mm. Um, come out that side. There was another time where we was on... Um, the park opposite George Orwell School, Ray mm. Crescent Pavilion, doing a little track thing off of there. And again, um, I went to go grab it mm. and they bust off and it went in here mm. and came out here. Like, my, I wear my watch over where, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, I see it. That's yeah. Exit and still. and um, the first one, that one, I didn't even feel it, to tell you the truth. I just went, and I think in adrenaline, it's just gone bush straight through. Mm. And the bullet ended up lodged in the window okay. of the yard. Mm. And I just kind of fight it with them, grab the thing, fight it with them until I got them out. And I think that my adrenaline was more heart overhead. Sense would have told me, sit down and give up your things, no one gets hurt. Mm. Mm. And I ain't too proud. <laughs> you understand? Like, common sense would have told you, sit down and give up your things, no one gets hurt, be on your way. You got the belly today, and we still got tomorrow to mm. do, you know, regroup and recuperate, whatever. So, yeah, head over heart logic. 
I just thought we're surrounded in a house full of women and children. And I love every single person in this house. Like, I love them. I think you will know love when you know that you're willing to give your life for love. Mm. That's when you will know that you love someone. Mm -mm -mm. You understand? So, and sometimes when you're in them kind of situations, it's like everything slows down because so many things happen in a millisecond. Mm. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Like, I took one to the neck, but we still got to struggle and fight. I got to get this thing off these guys. I got to force them out of this house. How many of there is there? I got to push them out. Got to be about Mighty. this life. Can't have them hurting these women and children in this house. Mm. Um, the, the one where it got me through the wrist, that was mad because you see how fast I could throw my wrist backwards. Mm. I could never throw my wrist backwards as fast as that thing took my wrist back. Mm. Like, I've gone like that. Bukai! My hand's over there. Of course it was. You're lucky. Yeah. You understand? Your, lucky still on your wrist. L yeah, no, them ones are really like, <laughs> we know. <laughs> Grab the thing. And before I know, as the mm. word Bukai lick, my hand's <laughs> over there. And I'm like, how did you get over there yeah. so fast? Bullet, like, how are bullet, you over there? over there? Like, I can't punch no one with this now. You got oh, some fucking lefts. Imagine mm. that. <laughs> but you know your instinct. You just yeah. naturally. Oh, I could do that and I could do this, but I can't, that's gone. And um, so yeah, it's mad. Um, dangerous times. Bro. Dangerous times. Do, do you know? I'm a humble man, and I've always looked at the bigger picture. Always, right? <clears throat> I'm going to break this down. We live in an area where if we take a bus ride away, the people them have got Picassos in their house. See? And we're all struggling in the ghetto with nothing, trying to make something out of nothing, with nothing, trying to make something. So for a man to have to risk his jeopardy and his freedom to try to feed, feed his kids and keep a little economy circulating in the community for everyone's betterment, mm. I see the positivity in that. So I've never, ever thought any way about the distribution of herbs within the community to generate an income that serves the community. And that's how my heart stays righteous. I also know that if we're thinking about eating a man's food, a man ain't pushing food because he's... he's a man's pushing food because he's broke and he's desperate. Mm. So for a man to take set on the next man's food, you're taking set on someone who's already in a desperation. Mm. Don't make no sense. There's none of us in any of these gully areas that can't take a bus ride to where the grass is greener on the other side. Mm. When I see riots kicking off and we tear up our own area, we're only destroying ourselves. So I look at a bigger judgment and I say to myself, there's a kid in my ends that's been sent by one of my elders that put that thing in his hand. Mm. Nobody loves you. Mm. One of your elders has put that thing in your hand to come and hurt me. Mm. I'm the one who loves you. Get sense, young man. Mm. You probably come here last week and bought a draw off me and asked me for a touch and I gave you a touch. Mm. Mm. You probably come the week before and said, I ain't got no money, can I owe a tick? Can I let you owe a tick? Who's confused your brain and put that thing in your hand to take my life? You're a victim because I see it and you don't even see that you've just been made a victim, fam. Because the person who put that thing in your hand don't care for you mm -mm. or the bird you're going to do if my life is gone. Or mm. the karma you're going to get off it. Or the time. karma you're going to get off it. Now, I know something else. Mm. That's not what your mother wants for you. Mm -mm. It's not. And I want for you what your mother wants for you. I love you. Who made you twist your head to come kill me? In any circumstances. Everybody who dies in the hood dies because their bridging did it in their circle. It's never from out the circle. It's always in the circle. Mm. You see the you who did that to me? He needs to know that I love him. I love him more than anyone loved him. Mm. You understand? Mm. He knows that I've got true love because I love the people that he came to hurt and I wouldn't allow that. I mm. will lay my life out of love. Mm. Now watch this. We talk about the things that we will rep. The chain that I'll die for, the ends that I'll die for, my rep that I'll die for. 
Mm. Why are we talking about all these things to die for? Give me the, your reasons to live. Mm. Tell me what you will live for. Tell me about your kids that you will live for. Your mum that you will live to make proud. Uh, see, I'm set differently, me, you know. Mm, mm, mm. So when there's a youth who's come to take off my head with a skeng, he's the victim. Mm. And I see it clearly. Seeing? Mm. So he needs my love probably more than anyone else. The guy who's coming to kill me needs my love more than anyone right now. Everyone pause. He needs the love right now. Because mm. he's twist up trying to take my life and I ain't got a bad intention about anyone. Mm -mm -mm. But who do you bless? Oh, Come on, bro. Come no, on. it is blood. I, I hear that as well, but see on the other, on the other hand of that, yeah, blood, yeah. It's just hung, like, man, just hungry as well. You get what I'm trying to say? Because obviously, you know, like, man's come up a certain way, so... If we're hungry, that's because you know we're it is, blood. Man's come up a certain way, so I couldn't even... I, I might have run up on a couple of people. I might have, I don't know. Because we're you victims. You get what I'm trying to say? Because we're victims. But, yeah, precisely. Because we're victims. And we're hungry as well. And you, you know what? Man might have just heard, like, yeah, Skinny's making the money. You get, they don't know what you're making the money for. They just heard, why am I making the money? Boom, Watch boom, this. Boom. And we're young as well, you know what I mean? So it goes, it gets, Watch it gets, this. It gets funny still. My not notoriety, mm. notoriety, notoriety, mm. never came from rapping. Mm. It came from, what? There's a little white boy in the middle of the ends, mashing things. Mm. Jealousy, and that word went envy. north, far, south, mm. east, where, what? Mm. And I know everyone from every ends, and I've always showed love to every ends. Mm. So I know all of the G's from every end. Mm -mm -mm. And imagine when you know that there's G's who you've looked up to and respected and they've got their eye on you now. Yeah, mad. What? He was giving me noodles on the landing, fam. Mm -mm -mm. How did he get to this? How did it get to, mm -hmm. have I got noodles and sardines to, to this? Mm. Uh, I, I'd never want nothing like that for you. Mm. And, and that's why I'm saying, you see not how- Not everyone's the same. You see how desperate we can get? This is why I'm saying, we're all victims in this equation. Every single one of us that comes from a lower working class background, mm. it's been structured so that we're the victims. You wanna talk about racism and institutionalized racism? Well, as a young black boy living in England, you've got so many odds stacked against them that it's made and structured so they don't stand a chance. Mm. Now imagine if you're the only white boy in the ring. The police are just as racist, if not more, to you for being the white boy hanging around with them black boys. Mm -mm, of course. But is everybody in that lower working class environment a victim? Yes. But a white person can always come out of their Tottenham media environment and get a job in a white society. Mm. A black boy from Tottenham doesn't have those same opportunities. His postcode and his surname alone is exactly. going to prevent him from any opportunity because of the way that the system is set against him. Mm. So when I say that we're all victims and I relate back to if we riot, do we tear down our own communities? When I first come to London, I said to the cabman, where's the money? Where's the big money? Because my imagination is mad. That's why we could do so much seg mm. down the seg. Yeah, come on. You think locking down for coronavirus, this ain't a thing. Exactly. We do seg for months, mm. right? And um, I said, where's all the big rich houses? He goes, oh, you want to go to um, Bishop's Avenue up Hampstead Heath? Mm. And I took my little Raleigh burner and I read up Hampstead Heath and there they were, all the houses looked like straight mm. out of Fresh Prince, you know, um, Beverly Hills, you know, coming to Beverly yeah. Hills. I'm like, here it is, here it is. Imagine having a paper round on this road and you get to deliver the papers. Um, used to be imagine being the richest road, isn't it? Yeah, in London. richest road in London. Yeah. Imagine being the milkman or being the milk boy or the paper boy. Mm. Imagine that a rich man then want to look for a young gal. She's into him for his money and he's into her for this. Mm. 20 years down the line, he's popped his clogs and she's still a young gal and she's a millionaire, but you're the gardener. Say nothing, can scary spice, can scary spice fuck from? Scary spice is scary in every way. Can she fuck? She's scary in every way. Can she fuck from? <laughs> yeah, she's sorry. Proper, yeah? Scary in every way. Scary and everything. Yeah, I drew him out. See, I drew him out. Like I see that you, I see that you sedate her still. 
Primary school thing. I didn't even know. But even I see it in the um when I done my little research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Primary school, you beat in primary school, like that. She was Dolly House Queen. Like that, man. Mm. She's early then. She's, 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 she's Dolly House early. Queen. She's yeah, Dolly she's House Queen. Off early. All right, big up scary spice movie, <laughs> scary in primary school. You get but but do you see how I'm saying we're all victims to this thing? Mm. Like the stick up kid who's coming to Nyam food, mm -hmm. he's a victim as much as the guy who's getting his food Nyam. Mm. Because who are we not running up on? Mm. If we look at the structure of who there is to be run up on that are insured for their Picassos, stately homes, like people this year have started talking about pull down statues. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, do you know that you can trail the money back to the brother today and find out where his house is in the countryside? And you want to run up on a little man in, in the ends trying to shut his little food. Mm. Do you where, know what? Yeah. Sorry, brother. Yeah. Your story. That ain't even your story. You, you've got such a bigger story. Mm -hmm. Many like, moods to Moses. So much, so much, Ma yeah. Many so moods much, to Moses. I'm just going to keep it pushing, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to keep it pushing because I'm going to, I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do this time, Cream, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to go into the racism because of our, yeah. and then we'll do the current affairs Last, at the end. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, it, so. it ties so well yeah, I think into so. his life. I agree. And everything mm -hmm. else. So it's like we can still mm -hmm. kind of get mm -hmm. your story, but. Yeah. We'll talk about this racism thing because, you know, like it's something that um, obviously, like it's, it's, it's something that we, we forget about, innit? Like, because, you know, like it's England and like we, we get it, like there's so much different cultures and by now we've learned to live with each other. So it's like, it's not as bad, innit? It? But it's something that's still there. So I just want to talk about it and get like Cream's point of view. I know mm -hmm. Cream is like black and proud all the way like me, but she's got views and skinny man. True, I knew this is my first white guest. He's not even white, he's like a black you. Yeah. I've been in the trenches. I'm white and Scottish like the rest I've of them. I've been in the trenches with this guy, yeah. So yes, he's like a black you, but he's white anyway, yeah. But that's why I wanted to get into like, you know, racism because to me, it's a, obviously there's a lot to talk about but we're just going to skim through what we can. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I think like, my my intake of it, before I get to you, like, I'm just going to yeah. say like, my intake of racism and all that, is that, um, like, obviously when I grew up, because I didn't grow up here, I was born mm -hmm. in a black country. Mm -hmm. And it's mad because I see my cousin lives there, big up Chendi, yeah? but my cousin posted something on his Insta story the other day and he was like, I d I've never felt racism <laughs> and I thought fuck you know because where he lives do you get what I'm trying to say you don't you wouldn't yeah. feel racism in a yeah. black country or whatever because so as well saying that people I might have a mad point of view but I'm saying this ain't man's country like that so it's like um, so I kind of get sometimes where they're coming from not, the, not where they're coming from but you know like you know if people come to your country and they act in a certain way. Wait, wait. If people come to your country and they act in a different way to what you, do you know what I'm saying? This is your country. It's like, where I'm from, Dominica. That's Dominica. I want it to stay Dominica. I don't want bare white people coming there and having fish and chips and all that. Having it gentrified. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. I don't want bare. So it's like, I get it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? This is their country. And as far as like, slavery is a big madness. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And it's not something that I say that we should look at as lightly or forget about. But with slavery, I look at it as something that's hindering our progress as well. Just the thought that we've just got that hanging over us and we keep thinking about it. It's like, it's like with your girl, yeah? Sometimes it's like you might have cheated or whatever, yeah? And it's all in the past and it's like, you know, like when your girl just keep, like you get over it or whatever, but you might be in a different place, you're in a better place, but they're never going to forget that, but they keep talking about that. You get, that's like slavery. Sometimes if you don't leave something in the past, yeah, you're always going to make it where you down. That's my outtake of it. Um, you get, well, I'll quickly say, say this to what you just said to that. <clears throat> I need someone to say something. Yeah. If you do your girl dirty, now forget and you no, 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 so to, to that analogy you made that analogy you made that analogy you're going to say what I was going to say mm. if you did your girl dirty mm. don't you have to make up to her and of make course. it right yeah. of course so of course. has that been done in this equation of course of course of no. course so yeah yeah of course just I was going to say mm. that as well because I was going to say so basically if you mm. cheated on your partner mm. and you never did it again 
then and she kept bringing it up, then obviously that would be a problem because you haven't done it again and you've made, like you said, changes. Mm. But if you kept doing things associated, not even just cheating, even associated with cheating, it might not be as bad, but you're still doing it, mm. then obviously she's still going to mm. um, have a problem, yeah. which is what I think is the issue today. The middle, yeah, so it's not that slavery is, is like here as how it was before. Mm. But obviously, you when you look to find out who you are, you have to know where you're coming from as well. Mm. And I don't think that we should forget about our roots. Do you understand? And racism is still here. Mm. Racism is when you're um, discriminated and prejudiced by you know because of the color and that of your skin. Uh, you said you haven't experienced racism, but I'm sure no, I didn't say I haven't. Experienced oh, oh, is that what you I said, said? My cousin has it. Oh, 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 sorry, I thought you said you. Kind of I didn't but, experience okay. racism till I come to England. Oh right, I yeah. Didn't experience so basically, I was in a black, I was like in a black country. majority of black people, you don't have to have like something as bad as someone come up to you and call you, you know, you black this or whatever. But you must have experienced when you've even walked into an establishment and you yeah, know yeah, that because of the color of your skin, you've been dealt with differently. Do you, mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. So like, yeah, until it's no longer here, mm. we're not going to forget about everything what yeah, anybody that- did. TV, yeah, maybe it sounds. I'm I'm pro black as well, yeah, but it might sound like I'm be, being devil playing devil's advocate, yeah. Okay. But my whole thing is that I get that, but I'm saying this ain't man's country. Like mm-hmm. you don't get that in black country. Mm. Is that's mm. my whole point. Mm. Like you won't get into it. If anything, the, the white people might get it. But this this get country promotes huh? equality. Yeah, 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 to that. So that to they that. say that everybody is and no, but you know they don't agree with anything like that. To so that, I'm gonna say this, right? If I was to take an ignorant white person who's your typical EDL, St. George, British Bulldog, one, two, three, mm. go back to where you come from type ignorance of mentality, <laughs> what we'll find is that um, we could question his authenticity of what his Britishness is because you said about people coming here. Mm. So I could ask him, are you Norman? Viking, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Roman, or other that we don't know. Mm. Because no one in actuality is British. It was an abandoned island. Mm. Anybody who's come here has inhibited it. So at one point, everybody was an immigrant. Mm. Okay? It's no man's land. Now, do you um, serve to that St. George's Cross, that Red Cross of St. George, who, if I show you the Ethiopian depiction of St. George, he's in actuality a black man. So the black man is your hero for his red cross, for who you promote racism with, little be known to you. Mm. Then there's not a podcast big enough, let alone a, a month in history that we can dedicate to this subject. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to come with some rapid pinpoint facts to try encapsulate as much different avenues as we can just through my own observations of being me um first observation being this we are told that statistically ethnic minorities and is as little as eight percent in this country as little as six percent even um now for there to be a six percent minority within a country Mm. And within that minority of that country, they have a crime investigation department squad called Trident to tackle predominantly black on black crime. Mm. I will tell you that as a 6% minority, it doesn't justify enough for there to be a squad specifically to target black on black crime that shows you how institutionalized the racism is within the British criminal justice system that the institutionalized racism is enforced by the police um, and by the government by the school stature Um, when we look at the British Empire Mm. that was built as an empire from the Romans came here in year 44 AD (coughs) the city of London is a square mile Mm. and through that they've done tax and then built their own corporation. So the city of London is a corporation that banks for the world. When they built the empire, facts that we have to know is that they've raped every land. Uh, Every black owned country that has the richest minerals in the world has been raped since the early days of the empire for the last 400 years. 
the scramble for Africa amongst the European continents that have tried to even um, justify racism through eugenicists and etc. Because racism is a political agenda. It's as much a political agenda as it is class. Because if we look at the people of the world who are melanated, who are not the minority of the world, who own the vast majority of the wealth of the world, of the resources of the world, who could simply economically, even Gaddafi showed us that with their gold R. alone, Gaddafi, could man. put um, RIP Gaddafi alone with gold could put people out of British trade, international European trade. Um, and then if we talk about making wrongs right, as far as making up to our girlfriends. Mm. Well, as you know what? Let me just go back to that girlfriend because you lot are onto me. Yeah? No, no, my no, whole thing is about wait, making wait, wrongs um, right. My whole thing um, with mm. that, yeah, what I was trying to say with that is like sometimes, yeah, like when you hold on to the past, yeah, it, hin it hinders your future. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But That's my whole thing. As far as black, black people, I'm saying with us, like, we need to look forward. You get what I'm trying to say? I don't well, see that. I don't instead see instead of looking back. So that I'll say this. That's just me. So that I'll say this. So that I'll say this. You get what I'm trying to say? Because no one can't come and, and make me no slave now. Do you get what I'm trying to say? No yeah. one can't. I ain't, no one no. can't come and slave me. Listen, no one can't. You know, I'm trying to say I'm dead first. So I know that's I, not yeah. my current situation. So no one ain't this. making me no slave right now. No, but they're so enslaving you in different ways. So watch this. You get what I'm trying to say? Because that's not me thinking about, oh, yeah all my great, great, whatever was enslaved or whatever, that's not going to bring me forward or move me forward. Yeah. Do you get and furthermore, mm. I'm racist as well towards white people and towards, we're all racist, <laughs> yeah? Like, do you get I what I'm saying? I'm no, but, no, I'm not racist. I'm not racist. I'm not racist. Like, as, as far as I, as far as that like, race, like proper two race, and like, I, lo I, I like, I got white friends and all that. Listen to me, yeah? Go I got on. white friends and all that, yeah? And all that, but why I'm saying I'm racist or whatever, yeah, like same way in man's yard or whatever, you might laugh and say white people can't cook or they can't season mm. properly. That's racist. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So you might think next people might sit there, I'm not racist, but yes, I will say yes, I'm racist in it certain times. Mm. I have Cultural racist pun. points of view. Yeah, you certain might say times. racist things, do you but do you say? just down dislike even, someone like, because down of the to cut. even like you might say raw. Like when mom was young, yeah, the, the Indian people might stink of, of curry or whatever. I don't even know, whatever, yeah. Well, but I'm watch saying this. next the, people might say that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but here's that's what racist. Mm. Here's that's what, racist. Here's what I need to let you know. Mm. If history, right, of 400 years mm. has been a 400 year structure mm. to make sure that a certain set mm. of Northern European Caucasian elite families remained to be on top of the eco position of the world's economical pyramid mm. through systematically 400 years oppressing black people mm. into the position where African countries have to pay billions to France to this day every year, mm. where African countries pay billions in tax to people who were their colonialists. Mm. Now, what I've got to explain so that you have to know that how how prevalent racism is today mm -hmm. is that world economics today, mm. all of the banking quarters, all of the International Monetary Federation, and all of the wealth that mm. you see in the mm. world today, mm. the world the world's economical mm. wealth mm. was mm. built by black labor. Mm. Mm. And that a lot of these high ups so, um, corporations have got um, investments in the um, prisons, and that um, basically, like what you just said, spray about people saying about oh this because of cooking and stuff like that. People can say like you know like ra racist stuff about people and that, but I don't remember any like black people going out and just killing people because of their color, throwing them in prison just because of their color. Stopping them from their potential just because of their color, like the list goes on goes and on, on and on and on. Year in, year out, year in, year 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 out. If I may, if I may, when the fuck does it stop? Even up to us going into quarantine and all that, I believe it's bigger than that because I saw so much black people becoming owners, becoming business, um, their own CEOs and stuff. Like I just feel like, you know, like when it comes down to racism, we've definitely got it the worst. And I'd like to emphasize on his comment because this is even embedded in deep racism. The slave masters 
used to demand that they wanted to see their chicken white and clean, right? Mm. And all that the slaves were left with was the chicken foot, hence chicken foot soup. But why does the chicken foot soup taste nicer than whose white chicken meat? Because it had to be seasoned and made to taste nice. Because in the slavery days, the slaves were getting the leftovers and they had to work with what they had to add flavour to it. So Mm. when we talk about the great West Indian cuisine and the art of seasoning meat, Mm. that came as out of necessity through slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even the beautiful West Indian cuisine that we know and the seasoned meats and the jerk meats that we Mm. know came out of necessity of hardship. Mm. Whilst Master wanted his plain meat there, Mm. And his apple sauce on the side. Yeah. And he says, he says deep against. as because they can't um, be as, you know, be as blatant with their racism, they've injected we, colorism within our race as well. Why now. do we know oxtail soup, but we don't know ox steak soup? Do you know what it is, bruv? I'm fully against I'm fully against racism. Don't get it twisted. I'm against it and all that. I'll punch man in their face, man, trying to be racist to me. But let me say something, though. As, as black people, yeah, mm-hmm. we need to look at each other as well, yeah, as definitely. a whole. Do you mm-hmm. get what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Before we start mm-hmm. talking all this Black Lives Matter and all this racism and we're victims of racism and all that, but we're licking over each other. We're I, fucking... Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. I can... It's, it sounds bad, yeah? It sounds very bad, yeah? Mm. But I can more trust a brother that of another colour than my own brother because right. of just the way man think. Man's got to change their mentality as black people then, mm. innit? If, if we're supposed to get on as a people, then we need to change how we're being towards each other. Absolutely. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Otherwise, that's the main thing. Before we start complaining about racism and all of that, how about we deal with each other better before we start talking about how other people are dealing so, with so us? Then this brings it back to my statistics. It's like if you're... Right? Yeah, this brings, if it, you're, back, this brings yeah. it back to my statistics. Mm. Me and you get to go do music on road. Mm. So we come out of town yeah, yeah. and we get to see the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. And we've got a lot of white fans, Mm-mm-mm. right? And we get to see that the more places we go, the more fans are white. And only when we come back to it, to the end, yeah. our fans are black. Mm. Because that's the analysation of the fact that we come from the 8% environment. Now that 8% environment is tiny, but how much of that 8% is in the prison population more than 51%. Mm. So to break down how institutionalized racism that we don't see that isn't mm. spoke about works, mm. how can you have a minority of as little as 6% mm. taking up more than 51% of the incarceration population because the odds are stacked against the realization for black people in this country since Black Lives Matter the racists who are racist and proud mm. have, have found the balls to rear their ugly head again. Now, what it shows me is that they're uneducated because if we ain't left the ends, we are not educated about what it's like outside the ends of a first-hand experience. Mm. So we're in the ends and we're like, yeah, man's doing that to this man and the man's moving on that man and man's moving on that man and your black brother tries to move to your black brother. Uh, right, I'll take you to an all-white poor area. And then it's no different. There'll be white and white crime as there is black and black crime. Mm. If the circumstances have been created for mm. these people to have no wealth, no economy, no em- employment, right? I mean, black people's realization within the UK mm. need to really own the fact that the system is absolutely rigged against them in yeah. every way. Mm. And the realization of owning this, only then can black people as a community come together mm. with their own realization mm. that the casino is rigged against them and they are the only the 8% in this country. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would, the- I would like to also say this on the other hand, the contributions that have come from black people and how far black people have come within these communities, understanding this, I've been able to see that these black communities have thrived with all the odds stacked against them. Mm. Now, just as we say, me and you can do quarantine because we've done bird. Yeah? Mm. Now, if black communities in England have been oppressed for so long and still learn how to flourish, Mm. then young boys know that they have to do twice as well in school as their white counterparts 
if not three times as hard. Mm. They they know that they need to be three times as dominant in the workplace to get the managerial position. Mm. They also and know that, that they're, different they're, in the workplace. they're three times more as likely to be stopped by the police because they're targeted. Ten times more. Ten yeah. times more. You know, so when we look at what the statistics are, racism is disgusting. It needs to be eradicated. But do you know where it comes from? It comes from education. And it doesn't come from education of black people who know they're being persecuted. It comes from the education of white people realizing that it's time to resign from the white privilege because it's the white privilege that's in place that holds systemic racism in place. Mm. Until white society is willing to free up themselves from white privilege, which they're not, right? Mm. Then how are blacks going to get an equal fair shot? Mm. So racism, when it comes to systemic racism, whether it's economical redlining, whether it's because your name is a Muslim name, so you won't be accepted into Oxford or Cambridge, or you won't. Or you're, they're not going to. Or your postcode is N seventeen. If your postcode is N seventeen, your grades could be the highest, and you're not getting into Oxford or Cambridge. Yeah, that's what I was even going to say. To me, it's more, it's more class thing than a um, racial thing. It's totally like, a class thing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because you got white people, you got Indians, you got. Um, black people like we're all living in a ghetto do you get what I'm trying to say yeah, it's yeah. Turned, I think it's turned from being like just a racist thing to more a class thing and people they, see it more prevalent I mean? for what it is now they see that it's a class thing now a story a couple um, of Polish boys come to England in the hope of better and end up in Tottenham and they sat outside that, that hardware store there on the wall you see them outside Tottenham Seven Sisters they got the hardware store mm. and they all sat on the wall hoping mm. someone will hire them for the day and they're out there in the snow. And the old Yardy Rasta man comes out his door and he goes, you two must be freezing. Come inside and eat some soup, some idol soup there. You know what I mean? He gives them both a, a bowl of idol soup. And they look at his picture behind him and it's the, that Jamaica Paradise picture mm. with the girl with the swimsuit. And they're like, you've come from there to be here in the freezing. And he's went, well, you've come from Poland to be here in the freezing. And they went, yeah, but the maddest thing is, we've always told to hate you because you're black. And you're the only man who's opened the door and brought us in for a bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. And it's probably because of you that we're not going to die of hyperthermia today. How's that for indoctrination being thrown in your face? Now, how far does racism wish to be ignorant? Does a white racist ignorant person not want a black doctor to save their child's life? You know, when we think how ignorant does racism want to be? Like, or homophobia, you know, like... Oh, I'm a white racist and my child... Need, when it comes to racism, though, like, black people are always... Um, they, they're known for their, to, for being the help. So when it comes to those type of things... And I not can't put racism about, next to homophobia either. Do you know no, what but I mean? I'm, but I'm saying... So, I'm but saying, you know, like, for the homophobe, equally as for the racist, your child no, has just been licked equally. down by a car <laughs> and, and the black doctor comes who can save your child's life. Are you going to say, no, I don't want you to save my child's life because actually I have a prejudice against the colour of your skin? Mm. Right? Some people actually are that ignorant. Yeah, that's so, so, some people are actually so homophobic that they would say the same, like, oh, no, you're gay, you can't save my son's life. No, nah, you can save my son's life, just mind how you're touching him, man. No, so I'm, so I'm, I'm saying we've got all of these kind of things of ignorance but racism is a number one factor that needs to be addressed i like to go on to say when we talk about the divide and segregate and that black history is in february in america and the rest of the world and in england it's in october i'd like to say on this podcast for the first time ever out my mouth as an idea that you spark as a seed that grows to be a tree with strong roots and leaves and branches that England should celebrate Black History Month in February with the rest of the world and we should now start focusing on October being Black Future Month. Because where you said no good dwelling on the past, mm. absolutely agree with you on that, but now it's time to start focusing on where the black community in England is today, mm. where the black community around the world is today. Mm. Think about the teachings of the great Marcus Messiah Garvey um. and what he meant. As, as, as Pan-Africanism ideal, idealisms for Africans, for Africans, home or abroad. Mm. 
and when that community can find its strength in unity, there isn't any other community in the world that doesn't have a problem in unifying, mm. Mm, apart from the black community. But And the black community are not to be blamed for that. White imperialism is totally to be blamed for that. Mm. For the, 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 the um, what do they call it, the diaspora, the African diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora, generations of generations of generations of imperialism, mm. of colonialism. Mad thing, fam. What's your thoughts, Cream? Um, about the dwelling on the, you know, the past. I wouldn't call it dwelling. I'd say that we haven't forgotten about it, what happened. It's understandable. And I just feel like that if um, you look back and see like all of that, what happened, in order to show us that there is no racism, then just stop doing racist things. Mm. Now there is. Do you understand what I'm absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Men absolutely. need to stop. Racism men need to so stop being today. killed because since of the Black color Lives of their Matter, skin. Since Black Lives Matter. A whole and women, bunch and of kids. racist so, fan there. Black Lives Matter. To me, that's just mocking. You're but just you know mocking. when it you go to court, it yeah, spray. It is a mock. But spray, you know, if you go to it court, yeah, mockery. and you're going to court for a certain crime, you can't say about, yeah, I know, but what about so-and-so? The crime at hand or the topic at hand is this what we're speaking about. Yeah, you when can we're talking still, about, you can make, you can, you can make okay. reference still to okay. someone. Okay, <laughs> well, your, like, you know, like, with Black Lives Matter, then you start hearing, yeah, but what about black on black? We're not talking about black on black. I didn't say it didn't exist, mm. but what we're talking about is Black Lives Matter. We're mm. talking about white um, on black crime. You know, we're not talking about black on black crime. We'll if address I, I black on black when we I need to, because when it comes to black on black crime, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of misplaced. Hatred is contagious exactly. And contained in small There's a lot spaces. of misplaced Ricochet energy. There's that. a lot of PTSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot of frustration within the black community. Yeah. And all of those things need to be addressed. Yeah. Do you understand? And so when they're saying blacks are killing, I just feel like there's so much that need that that needs to be done with with why they, that is happening. And identifying with self love, exactly. Also. Uh, uh, not the European idealism of of beauty. Mm. That's a very important one for all of the young black princesses that are so beautiful. You know, as as all young princesses are beautiful of every nationality. Exactly. You know, but. Don't think that the European idealism of yeah, beauty mm -hmm. is for you young black ladies um, because you're not. You're young black ladies and you're, black beautiful. Women you're are, equally beautiful in your own right. Like, black, so mm -hmm. I'll, I will go on to say this. I mean, the racism thing, it's, it's, su it's such a thing. Because mm -hmm. we didn't even speak about black women because we spoke about men and I'm a woman. Black women are absolutely beautiful. And I believe that there's been an agenda placed out there um, to make the black woman less appealing. Do you understand? And um, we are the only women that produce full black males. Let me just say that. Yeah. And black males. And there's nothing wrong with um, wanting to reproduce um Reproduce within your own culture. The Other cultures do that. And every time we, we speak about that, it's frowned upon. Do you understand? And black men um, um, deal with a lot of racism. And I just feel like that is even connected to a lot of racism that black women get also. Ice cream, the demoralization mm. of the black family unit. Exactly. Has been an agenda yep. for 400 years. Exactly. More prevalent today than it has ever been. Mm -hmm. I'd like to come in and just um, be a bit controversial. The man who cooks my breakfast on the high street, he's a North. Cypriot Turkish man. Mm. They have their own conflict, their own culture, their own background, their own history. Now, I explained to him that if I was to make a red flag with the white sickle and star, which is the North Cyprus flag, and call it the Northern Cyprus Turkish Liberation Movement, mm. would all Northern Turkish people just think that that was a banner to represent them immediately. And he went, yeah, they would. I said, now what if I was to tell you that I actually started that organization to make sure that the south of Cyprus Greeks could mm. get political money for their agenda on you Northern Cypriots. So what I'm trying to say here is the black people identify with the colors 
red, black, and green. Mm. Of course they do, because it's the Marcus Garvey red, black, and green symbol of the Black Star Liner, the idealism of repatriation of African economics. It comes under a red, black, and green bandana, Uhuru, right? So black people around the world, if they've had anything to do... Can I just tell everyone that, you're, that your being one is black? <laughs> Just in case, just in case, but just that, in case that, they were doing that because that would no, you get what I'm saying? That would that would make like, a difference. No, it wouldn't make a difference. I'm letting yeah. them know how much you love the black people. Then <laughs> no, but uh, well, it's where white people come from. <laughs> That's how much it, this guy it, loves the black where, people. It's then. where white people come from. You get what I'm saying? Uh, it's where white people come from. That's how much so, he loves the black people. Then where was I just now? Because the flag, right? So now the the black community with any of their culture, will identify with the red, black, and green. Guess what else they'll identify with? They'll identify with the raised fist because they know the raised fist of liberation from the Black Panther movement and they remember Jesse Owens doing it on the podium. Mm. So the raised fist has become a symbol of black power. Mm. Now, if I get psychologists and tell me, give me an argument that nobody can argue, they'll go, all right then. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? You could never argue that point because nobody knows how could you ever, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, so it can't be argued kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Now, if I say to you, Black Lives Matter, there's no way that you can present an argument to that statement. How can you argue against a statement that Black Lives Matter? Mm. Go on, tell me they don't. So, of course, it's an agreeable notion that nobody can deny. So, if I was to think, I want to bamboozle and bandulu the whole black community, I know what I'm going to do. My agenda is to continue to make sure the devastation of the infrastructure of the black family unit doesn't happen. Mm. So, my agenda is this. I'm going to bring out an organization. Now, I need black people to head this organization because it's for black people. But I've actually chosen three black women who don't particularly like black men. Mm. And they're gay. They're lesbians. So they're not going to be reprocreating black babies with black men neither. Mm. So they're part of the destruction of the family unit and they have communist views and agendas. I've come through and done my research. So I'll have these people head my Black Lives Matter organization so that all the black people around the world can identify one minute, the raised fist, red, black, and green, black lives matter. Well, of course they do. Of course they do. So mm. that's our movement. And then every black person is going to stop giving their money to pastor in the church because here's the new Some hustle. Weed Here, here's the new hustle. Because it seems like you lot have stopped believing that white Jesus is going to save you. So now we're going to tell you that black lives matter is going to save you. Send your money, come. And the money that you're going to send to Black Lives Matter is actually going to be used to further oppress you. How's about that for a hustle? Mm. So this is why we have to be careful in these day and ages. Kid yourself not that there has been a 400-year agenda to make sure that the black community never raises to their full potential mm. because for these white Europeans who control the economical infrastructure through oppressing black people... Mm would have to give up world structure. I'll break it down again. All world economy comes off of the back of black labor. So exactly. to make it up to your girlfriend who you dissed, you'd have to give up world economy back to the hands of black people through reparations, meaning that white Europeans would be left with nothing and black people would be left with everything. Mm. Can you see white people wanting to do that? Hell no. Hell no. So... The realization of the black community is knowing the powers that they're against. Mm. Um, you must know thy enemy. You must be skeptical of all things. Um, mm. When I speak to my son, I tell him the first time I ever knew about genetical warfare mm. was when the white pilgrims was taught how to survive a cold harvest by the Native Americans. And after the Native Americans taught them how to survive the cold harvest, they gave them blankets as a present. Mm. And within those blankets, they were infested with smallpox wow. because these white pilgrims knew that they were immune to smallpox and people of melanin wasn't. And this was genetical warfare. 
it's happening today in the name of Pfizer. Mm. What what would make you ever think that the system has changed? And where you said it's become class. Mm. So they have testing kits and vaccines for poor children in school, but they don't have free meals for them. Mm. You know, so this is racism. This is class. And then who are they saying they want to test these things out on first? The African nations? Exactly. Um, Spray, do you want to? Now, here's what it is. Here's, here's another thing I have to say, right? This, this is my final um, thing on racism, right? When the Black Lives Matter thing started popping off, I see one blessed Asian youth in his car. And it's like, he's... His consciousness must have licked him because he went, Do you know what? Indian households are racist against black people, you know, fam. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk it up. He goes, Because unless you talk it up, then it's still a taboo that there's racism going on against blacks within the Indian community. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Call him Khalid and all of that. You know what I mean? Like, I know the international slurs, racist slurs. Um, yeah, race, racism towards black people ain't just it don't isn't just, just come from, from white, white people. people. No, it, no comes it's other, it's it comes been, from it's other people. It's been indoctrinated mm. around the world that all races think that they can look down upon the black race, which is the mother race of all civilizations. Because even races. like even like with with man, yeah, obviously like yeah, man's Muslim and that, yeah, but it's like you got certain man like Muslim as well. They still they they wouldn't want their daughter to bring me home. This is it. Exactly. Do you get what I'm saying? So they they these, don't care that I'm Muslim. It's this just is, I'm this black. Is the exactly. real, you know this mean? is the so real exactly. conversation of racism. Now, I will say this. As a white guy, my white privilege for me has been watching other white guys open up their racistness to me, thinking that it was cool because I was white and how wrong they were. But that's what my white privilege has been, is that white racists think that it's going to be acceptable to talk that shit in front of me because I'm one of them. Mm. We are all one. All this one of them, one of us. You're not one of us who's one of them. You're not all of this madness. Mm. Now, I will say this. For young black boys in the UK, for young black girls, for black people in mm -hmm. the UK, they have to be suspicious of every Caucasian person they deal with. Because until Caucasian people are willing to come out and go, oh yeah, there was racist in my family and there used to be racist slurs and there used to be racist talk and there used to be all of this, you better not come home with a brown baby and, you know, mm. like white people need to address racism because they were the ones who created it. The divide and, and, and all of the 400 years of it needs to be undone. But who does it need to be undone by? By the people that done it first. What, so, I mean, when it comes to like, who can I vouch for? Mm. There's a woman, I think her name's Jane. She's an elderly lady and she used to go to classrooms and do a test between blue eyes and brown eyes. Have you okay. seen this lady, Jane I, something? Yeah, I think I heard and, something? And she used to segregate that. the class and say, right, all of you kids with blue eyes, you lot are in charge today because the kids with brown eyes, they're not as clever as you. Lot. And she put them down and see how their learning would go down, their inspiration would go down. And then the next day she'd go, right, now the blue eyed kids, they're the ones who ain't so clever. Us brown eyed kids, we're the ones who, uh, and she'd switch it around. And then they'd speak to the kids at the end of the day, the blue eye kids, after being subjected to mm. prejudice mm. based upon the color of their eyes. And you see the reactions mm -hmm. of how unachieving and undetermined they didn't want to go on. And these were primary school children in infantry stages. Now, do that to an, a race of people for 400 years, and it's proven. So, when it comes to people who you can vouch for, I'd like to be able to say that when you lot, as my brothers and sisters, are asking me, who can I vouch for? I'm like, I can vouch for her. Mm. Because I know she's a real one. I can vouch also for my mother. Mm. Because I know she's a real one. It's not for me to vouch for myself. Because you can't do that. So I can only vouch for two people that I know. That I can say they're solid. Mm. Now. I think it's way, it's way bigger than that though. I think like there's a lot of, it's not like. There's a lot, every white, per not every white person is racist. No, they're not. 
Yeah, no, no, no. But a lot no, of them no, no are. Way. Not every white person is racist. Not every, but, not every black person. person and, is, until the white, I mean? until yeah. the white people but. that aren't racist are willing to come out and go, yeah, but my uncle Roger is. Mm. And the other day there was joke about can't season food. And he's saying, yeah, that's admittedly racist. Because I come you from know? Kilburn mm. and I, I grow you know, around a lot of you know, Irish. Who, and who lets them racist comments slide? But it's cool. That's what you I'm know, trying to say. To in me, the, it's in racist, the but it's cool for me to say it. You get what I'm saying? When we say, like, yeah, they can't cook, or I see people leave comments like, oh, that grey I foot, think it's going to be too foot, far. I'm foot. talking about no, when you no, directly no. hate somebody in because the year. of... We're in the year. Mm, that's that's you understand? You know I mean? It's yeah, important yeah. that we tell you that we're in February 2021. Mm. Because Christmas just come for the first time they went to show a black family at Christmas dinner and there was a, like a national uproar mm. from the white racist, like mm. Kevin and Karen society, mm. who, were, who are the majority of this country. Mm. You know, if we're not teaching the young black community that they're up against a nation of racists, then how are they meant to come to terms with it when it hits them? You know, it, it's about showing the young black community what they're up against, mm. not pretending, not pretending that you're going to be given a fair chance mm. because history has showed you, evidential fact has showed you that systemic racism is more prevalent than it's ever been and it continues to go on so. Mm. How does the black community in the UK break that spell or still continue to thrive within those, within that social predicament? Mm. Racism ain't gone. Racism is here to stay. It's not going nowhere. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's just something that, to me, is something that we've got to deal with, you know, it's something we've got to live with. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I can't see it going anywhere um, anytime soon. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I can. Spray talked about getting starred up. When I got starred up, it was because we had gone to work in a workshop five doing plastics and spoons and all of that. Mm. And my cellmate must have got in a fight. So when I come back, there was some skinhead in my cell who was my new cellmate. <laughs> and he's went, yeah, look, he left all the fucking niggas' photos on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, that's my missus and my kid fam. <laughs> You left all the tickets, but you was bugged. So that's part of that white privilege that I tell mm. you about. Do you know? He definitely went on the wing when we was there. No, this was oh, in a prison in Norwich. Fuck, TMR. What, yeah. what did he say? He said what? He, he went in his cell. He saw me come in his cell. Yeah, looked at the looked at, at, at the pictures. He said, "You fucking left all the niggas' pictures on the wall." But he said, "That's my whip. That's my missus and my." But you, you get what I'm saying? But he's thinking he could say that to my man because he's white, isn't it? Like, yeah, he's, he's thinking the cellmate that got kicked out must, must have been, have been a, a black, black guy. guy. I know, I can't believe it. I'm guy. still shaking my head. Yeah, like, no, so I'm saying, I've come back from the workshop yeah. where you put these little plastic spoons and forks mm. in the bag and uh, this guy's standing in my cell. I'm like, yeah, well, go on. Give him the chance, you know what I mean? And he's like, yeah, no. They've left the fucking niggas photos all like you know like <laughs> whoever they've took down the wing they've left these all these fucking uh, the niggas photos all on the wall. <laughs> I actually laughed out of you know the shock and nerves. I kind of went. <laughs> was he big like Jimmy? Wow. What, what did he, he like say? Wait, did he you... weren't big like Jimmy, but he was <laughs> he, he was much bigger than me. And I went, Jimmy. I went, right, that's my missus and my kids, fam. You know what? And. I just keep the door closed with my heel, and ever since that, I've been allowed a single bang up. Remember in the Ville when I fucking, hmm. when that big fucking, that you, Jimmy, man, the, the Jim Audley, he was just going mad, and I tried to move to him, and I allegedly, hmm. I allegedly poked him up. You see, another part of the divide and segregate, segregate getting one of the man them to be in charge of the rest of the man them for who can go gym. Hmm. And then that position go into his head, where he's now one of them, not one of us. Yeah, he turned into a screw. Do you understand what's happening? So they've given that position. He's now one of them, not one of us, because he's stopping us from going places, like, and he's become one of them. So Spray was like, no, nah, I'm getting on that list. Now, the thing is, they used to make sure that there was a rota for us lot to not get on the list, because the first 15 names down are the first 15 names down. And if we're on the ones or the twos, we get our names down because they open the ones or the twos first. 
if you're on the threes or the fours, by the time your door's open, the list's already full. Hmm. So he clocked onto the skank. He was like, nah, how can my door just be bust and the list is full? I can't never get onto this. <laughs> no, no, no. You just check. You, no, no. You got it <laughs> wrong, blood. You're remembering it crazy, fam. You're remembering it crazy. What, the gym list? Yeah, you're remembering it. No, I'm saying that's not why me and him got into something. That's not why. Because, it not over the no, gym No, no, no. It was over the gym list, but it's okay. because I hadn't even done gym induction yet. Mm. So it's oh. like when man come there, I had gym induction in the afternoon. Innit? Yeah. Like a couple of us had gym induction in the afternoon, but we were trying to put our names down in the morning, but we hadn't got our gym card yet, innit? Mm. So, but yeah, he, because he's, because he's a ID. screw now, he's like, oh, he wants to see my gym card, innit? But I've seen oh. a you, a you before me, my brethren's little brother, he's gone in without the car. RIP Knox, RIP man, Indian's little brother, but Knox, yeah, he's gone to um, put his name down. But my man's like, yeah, where's his gym card? Where is? So I just knew it was going to be a thing, yeah. innit? So it's like, him and um, Knox started having a little argument, whatever. Then, like, boom. They've, it's just gone It's gone left anyway yeah. yeah So my man's like Alright boom It's come to man We've ended up having a little Whatever Whatever So I'm, So the man's A man's allegedly Gone and got me a thing Or whatever And then The big you Come up there And we had a little thing You get what I'm trying to say But fucking Yeah Allegedly man Poked him up and all that But there, he, st- he still He still done incident. his thing There was more than once There was more than once Nah that was That was it man You get me I see him again Down the gym we was cri- we was cool after man. Remember the the screws tried to um tried to move him one time and they couldn't move him. But we was cool after. He never. Do you get what I'm saying? They, like the people them was like, yeah, man, um, poked him up or whatever. But he never said that. Okay, well, watch what this. Saying? We've been going vil for so long. Mm. Can you remember when there was only one black screw there? Nah, but fuck, I don't want to talk about prison right now, blood. Prison is yeah. just doing my nut, blood. I talk about it too much before. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I like, oh, Why are you always talking about prison? But boom, let's quickly go into the current affairs quickly, Carl. Oh, yeah. Um, current affairs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah current, current affairs. affairs. What's been going on? What's popping Obviously, in the world? Did you hear today? about Bobby Schmurder? He got released. Oh, yeah, Bobby Schmurder. Yeah. Bobby Schmurder's out. Schmurder, we got man. Bobby Schmurder keeping it chill and thorough. Yeah, I, I mean. know. Four years. It was four you did, didn't it? Six, I think. Six? Oh, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or did you do like four that. out of the six? I think field. he done six. I don't know. No, I think it has been six. Yeah. Oh, is it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw. Um, I see that he come out. He actually yeah, I see, well. I see all, all the looks youth, like he's put on weight Fiddy. and everything. He looks older. I see that you, Fiddy was with him as well. Mm. Fiddy from over here. You get me? He got yeah. Fiddy. Yeah. So he looks like he's going to be putting out some music and doing what he's got to do. Do you know um, what? Current affairs, the internet is crazy. Bobby Schmurder coming out, going viral. Yeah. Mm. Current affairs for me, UK artists getting mm. number one chart successes. Mm. Um, I'd like to big up everyone who's doing their thing. Um, Young Ads and um, Dipset Euro. Mm. Do, do, do you see our current affairs? There's not even know about all of that. Still, you're doing some next current affairs. <laughs> Don't worry about his current affairs. Yeah, but didn't current affairs mud. Don't worry about that current affairs. Um, that current affairs go on, cream. UK. Yeah, um, he's got mud with these current affairs. <laughs> <laughs> like, go I don't even like to talk on people's relationships and anything, but it's only because it's, you know, I noticed mm. that, you know, it's what everybody's addressing and stuff. But I did see that um, Correct announced that him and his missus have split up. That Sasha girl, yeah? Yeah. So he, I an, he announced it? Yeah. Like, he announced it, yeah? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Did he go know. as far as engagement? How I'd, did he announce it? He made a post. He, oh, I, oh. he must have said, um, I can't remember everything, but obviously, you know, along the lines of, you know, we're no longer to, together, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I don't know how I feel about him making the post, though. That's a bit mad. See what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, I why, think, do you, why would I just you do think, that? I just think, yeah, see what I mean? Obviously, it's, it's unfortunate. Their situation's unfortunate. Yeah, very. Because obviously, they're in the, um, they they're in the limelight, mm-hmm. innit? They're in the limelight and all that. But that's why, even with me, from even North Star days or whatever, yeah, like, I've always kept my my my, my girl, my babe mother away mm-hmm. from all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that's just not, mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't even want Mm. My business like that out private there. Life, private. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. So it's like, and it's like even with me, like no matter what's going on or whatever, I wouldn't come and say like, oh yeah, no, I don't think me and me and Haley had finished or me mm. and I wouldn't come and do that. No. I, she could do that. Yeah, you get what I'm trying to say she could be, do that all day long. I think but I wouldn't should, do that. Yeah. I'm trying to say, I think that's it should be the females. If, if, yeah, I think it should be for the female to say, I'm no longer with my but, partner anymore. But with her 
you know, like mm. when you said about keeping your partner private, mm. I'm not sure if she went into so in like in being an influencer since she's been with him, but I do know that she's an influencer. Mm. So she's got like a YouTube channel where she mm, posts, mm, mm. you know, like videos of them so as a family and stuff like how that. How popular you are and mm. how popular you might become, mm. are you allowed a private life? Like you have to keep it private. We know all about. Do you know what it is we know as well. You know what it is as well. Extent. See them Monday. See them Monday. They have to be careful as well because the girl them what they're picking as well. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You can't see like. See, like, all right, see when you get famous or whatever, yeah, like, your calibre of girl them, how they look, mm. you get, might, might rise, do you get what I'm trying to say? But you have to understand, these girl them might not, they might not like you because of how, because of how you look, you get what I'm saying? It might just be because you're famous, <laughs> mm -hmm. do you get what I'm trying to say? But where, like, obviously, like, certain man been getting girl from the gate, so it's like, man know how to deal with that type of thing, but it's like, I don't know, even when I look at the Stormzy Maya Jammer thing, I always look at that like, yeah. look, I just look like the gallon yeah, yeah, using the man them. I just look at it like the gallon are using the man them. But but that's just me. That's just how I think. That's just how I think. I'll say yes this. And no. In their limelight, can they escape being, can they escape their private life being up in the media? Like the Stormzy and the Maya Gemma, like the. Mm. Um, Kanye and Kim Kardashian are splitting up at especially the same with time. everybody mm. on social media with all these couple goals and things like that like mm. you know what I'm saying power people, couples yeah mm. the power couples I'll, and I'll stuff I'll say this I'll say this any, I think, any babies involved yeah they got a little got baby, a little baby. So then, I think um, it's all about the baby you know um, I think more so to the people looking in on relationships I think that people need to stop being so invested in people's relationships that they don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. understand you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. You well, just see what I, people post. I'll just say, I Do you hope understand they can what work I'm saying? Co-parents for the yeah. sake of the I, child. I, yeah, I think mm. that's that. He said that. I, I think that everything's you know amicable, and that I just thought that. I just think it would have been more tasteful if it came from her. Do you mm. know what I mean? But um, yeah, that was that on that. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree, man. Mm. But um, big up Crips older brother yeah. though. He's old school. Yeah, yeah, I like Krypton Conan. I think but, um, they're, they're lit. They're dope. Yeah, yeah. Now Krypton followed me still. <laughs> oh, really? Why? <laughs> no, but no, because, no, but Conan, big up Conan, big up Krypton. No, but you know where it is because remember when I had my mental breakdown and I was going mad on Twitter and all yeah, that. Yeah, real. yeah. Remember I was going mad. Gigs blocked me. Everyone blocked oh me. Oh yeah. my god. I was going mad. Yeah, but fuck it. I remember one time Gigs must have got into their comments or something. Minute he must have paged them up oh. about something. I can't remember, but I think Krypton must have apologized or something, and I've yeah. added him. Throughout my mental breakdown, mm. I it crept like, yo, I thought you were supposed to be with, like, what's yeah, going on? Sure. I'm saying, but man, he's, um, he's unfollowed, you get mm. me? But big up crept, man, you get me? We're good, man. Young entrepreneurs. I was going food, mad. Food <laughs> shop. I know. But yeah, now, big up them. Now, big I up still them. mourn the loss they're of big. Cadet. They're you big, they're big. Yeah, RIP Cadet. They're RIP. big, but you know, time, mm. time's moving on. This is your yeah. real of the most shit. Yes. You get what I'm saying? I nearly phoned you to ask you what size, but I thought, <laughs> obviously, small. Super size, super size. Obviously small, you get what I'm saying, skinny man. Yes, really the most. And listen, there has Wait, to, I need you to do, there do has this. to be a click link in the description below of how you can get your real of the most, but it's mm -hmm. only for the real ones though. Maybe there shouldn't be a link. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's about being real to yourself, you know. Yeah. Real of the most, RTM See, yeah. stands for being real to myself, real yes, to yourself, same yes, way. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, we had a um love that, love that. We had a competition last time mm -hmm. for a um, real of the most volume three. It was um what was track four E nothing on RTM volume three. The answer was Real niggas featuring Tommy Bones, my nigga, oh, from um, the Blue Borough. Yes. So yeah, let's see who Blue won that. Massive. You get me? We got Tommy Bones. Pick pick one out of that. Right. My man. I'm my going. Match. I'm going through them. We got one. Right. At one, say, oh. at one dot, dot K -X -X -M -I. K -X -M -I. KXMI. Yeah, so they've won. You win the lottery, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what you got to do is um, <laughs> DM your um, address and I'll send you that um, yes. that CD. And the book for this episode is um, every episode I give them a book to go and read. This month, this month, this episode is The Internet of Money. Yes. By Andreas M. Antonopoulos or something like that. But anyway, basically, <laughs> and last time we were talking about Bitcoin mm. and yeah. all of that. And then I mentioned that um, my sister's husband, he deals with it. So he oh, okay. he suggested this, this is a good book to go and read. 
to if you want to learn about um, Bitcoin and all of that. Andreas M. Antonopoulos is a technologist and serial entrepreneur who has become one of the most well-known and well-respected figures in Bitcoin. He is the author of Mastering Bitcoin, published by O'Reilly Media, and is considered by many to be the best technical guide to Bitcoin. Yeah. As an engaging public speaker, teacher, and writer, Andreas makes complex subjects accessible and easy to understand. As an advisor, he helps startups recognize, evaluate, and navigate security and business risks. Andreas was one of the first to use the phrase the internet of money to describe Bitcoin and its potential impacts on humanity. So yeah, it's a good book to yes. read if you want to learn about mm. Bitcoin and all that. Cryptocurrency. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, man. And that's where it's heading. So, Untaxable. Because everyone's on this, yeah, you yeah, need to get onto Bitcoin, talking, get onto yeah. Bitcoin, yeah. but yeah. it's not it's as simple true. as that. No, it's not. It's not as simple as that. You don't like, learn about it. So yeah, yeah it's the internet of money. Yeah. Um, big up yourself, Spray. We're on episode yes. ten. Yeah, oh, no. double figures. And big up now. to Spray. Listen, <laughs> the real of the Money. most podcast. The Gee, real no. ones know that it is come the thing. On. Listen, no. why do you think I'm up here talking no. this thing? No, thank you. Come man. on, man. Thank come you for on, coming to you, man. So good to we see you. Alive. We have to do it. Life is for the living, you know. You we need to live it up to the You know where we're coming from. You get what I'm saying? You know what? Do you get what I'm saying? to the host. Thank you. Come on, ice cream. Follow the queen. Well, at Ice Cream, the poster girl. Also, I've started vlogging, so follow my YouTube at Queen Ice Cream TV. Yeah, uh, follow me at Big underscore Bud underscore Spray, and I follow the legend. Follow me at Skinny Man Mud Family. I think like I don't even know more people <laughs> following me. Like, I'm, 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 now, big you up, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, you, thanks you for coming. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say, All your flowers, I'd like to say yeah. this. There's so much to be said. We joked at the start of this saying a podcast is only so long about as long as a Pentonville prison visit mm. <laughs> when we've got so much to say. So I'd like to say this now. I'd like to think that they'll invite me back for the 110th <laughs> podcast. Yeah? yeah, you come back before that, man. The 110th podcast at least. Mm. Get me back for that. That's yeah. the anniversary. Uh, yeah. Big up yourself. Back. Thanks big for up. coming. Big! Big up the Skinny cameraman man. in the back. You don't really know. Big up Nova and Ben as well. Big up Nova. To the audience watching... There's a one-man technical team behind the camera making it all work. Yeah, it's a big enough. Yeah, he's getting paid. He's getting paid. Don't big him up. <laughs> Boom. Show. <laughs>